Might Pro League playoffs powered by Alienware. And of course, the, the most asked question of 2020, 2021 was how many casters does it take to build a Smite Maxonomic chair? And you saw, even sped up, it seemed to take three of us way, way too long than it should two. to take Agro it. was not participating. Agro, well, he didn't. Okay, so here's the, here's the fun behind the scenes. Did not get his screws on his side. That's why if you see me go over there, I tighten the screws on the other side. Then he participated again as an observer, as a manager, I guess, in that kind of position. But we wanted to answer the question, how long does it take one Smite caster to build maybe more than one chair, maybe just one chair. Yesterday we saw Dave build one with a hacksaw of all things. It was kind of weird that he was able to do that one. But you know, we, we, we left him and said, hey man, we've, we've got a lot of these that, that need to be done, right? If we're going to be playing in studio, we, we, we need some Maxnomic chairs. And it looks like the man got it done. Oh man, a lot of, a lot of deep work in there. It looks is, Did he stay here he overnight that, for that? Is that a blanket? I think that was a blanket. Did you did he sleep in a chair? Dave, you got the okay. No grease stains. You're good to cast. What? No grease stains. You're like good to cast. Like, I see the mask was on. I, so. I do not like this part. Right. There's a. I don't like that part. Turn it okay. around. Turn it Need around. Needforseat.com. <laughs> Code Smite Max. Dave coming at me with a saw was not anticipated today. Yeah, but everybody knows you <laughs> run faster with a saw in your hand. It is true, actually. Like your your movement speed, whenever you have something sharp, does increase. I think actually double. Largely what it sharp is normally. and dangerous. Yes, especially if it, it either if it's pointed dangerously towards you, where like tripping would be a hazard. Usually, other people. Yeah, anything actually. Such as it Dave's all works favorite out. Thing to do. Either way, needforseed.com. Use code SmiteMax. I'm a little curious how he managed to get 10 chairs built with just a hacksaw. But either way, we're going to be looking at it. Today, we have the dragons. You can see them behind me. The warriors, you probably saw them over there behind Taco, which, by the way, it's still us on the desk. They're going to be taking on each other here in a second, a matchup that is one-to-one -one this year. They've actually gotten to play each other twice, which is kind of a rarity. They got to play in that group stage, though, and that's where the warriors were able to eke out their first seed position because of that win. And it was something that was... Very hard fought in order to do so. Now they have to capture lightning in a bottle a second time and beat the dragons twice. And if there's one thing that I can say with certainty, it's that the Jade Dragons are not a team that's super keen on losing to anyone or just losing in general. So the Oni Warriors definitely have a, a very tough set lined up for them today. And I think it's especially going to be a lot of fun gore seeing what goes down in that solo lane. It's been a pretty yeah. big storyline for the duration of the split because we have so many fantastic solo laners. But Nika and the Fine OK matchup has bound to have some sparks flying in that solo lane. I mean, this is one that I think is most interesting. Nika, look, the Warriors as a whole, especially the last time they, we got to see them play the group phase a, as an entirety, they looked really good. But let's face it, from week one, Nika's been the one showing up for them. Despite losses, he always managed to look good. Here we have the King Arthur. I won't be surprised if there's some Cullen in there because memes, but also Sugeyomi was a, a really big... Uh, pick up for him over there in solo lane. He's willing to go to these assassins. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to what he's going to, to be locking it down over there, but the good news is that the Warriors have a very reliable pillar over there in solo. And the cool thing about this matchup between the two players is that I, I definitely think that Nika and Fine OK are both some of the most flexible solo laners in terms of their god pool diversity. They're not afraid to take a losing matchup, so to say, during the direct laning phase, if it yeah. means being able to bring a little bit more power to, to the team fights. And we saw Baron, for example, out of Fine OK yesterday. That was a pretty off-the-wall pick that had a ton of risk versus reward involved with it. Granted, it does have a decent matchup into the Osiris, but again, it's just how often do you really expect to see Baron Somni in a pro-level match? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so curious to see what Nika intends to do to sort of battle this one out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, how they are able to handle each other, really, I think is the best way to look at it. But what better way to find it out? I guess he won't reveal too much, but we've got Nika standing by for this one. I, again, I probably am not going to dive too deep into some of your strategies, mm. but I'll actually start on the, the point Taka was just making, which is very simply, you and Fine OK are willing to play pretty much anything. Do you expect that versatility in solo lane is going to come to a big head here in this, first, or in this match as a whole? Um, I don't think so. I'm I'm pretty certain we'll see the uh, 
you know, King Arthur Kakolans mainly, maybe some Tsukiyomi. <laughs> uh not not too much outside of that i'd say maybe if i'm playing osiris he'll play baron or something but uh i think it'll be pretty standard in solo lane um just standard throughout the whole whole series i feel like i think we'll just rely mainly on basic draws similar to our group stage match pretty much well, a lot of, of what's been going on for like the Warriors as a whole has been your success, specifically in rotations. You know, you mentioned the Sukiyomi mm. early on. You rotate with him, and you get a lot of kills. Fine, okay, is not the kind of guy that's going to let you just kind of run rampant over there. Do you think that you're going to be able to to get a lot of that early lead that we're used to seeing from you, or do you think Fine, okay, is going to give you a little more trouble? Uh, I think it just depends on how the teams want to play. I mean, in our set against them, they played a lot of solo pressure with like Athena and just like early rotations. But uh, it just kind of depends on how we want to play the map. Like both teams, you know, like we we can play like both teams can play through the side lane, which is what makes us such strong teams. I'd say so. Uh, I think it all depends on how we how we play off. Do we see the drafts pretty much? Well, hey, man, it sounds like you've got a lot of this figured out. At least your head's in the game going into this one. You understand your matchup. You know what's about to be ahead of you. Good luck in your games. Thanks for your time. Thank you. But Taco, again, it kind of sounds, again, like he, he acknowledges, like, this is not going to be something, like, in solo, probably not a lot of flair, not a lot of fireworks. <laughs> Everything's going to be pretty much exactly what you'd expect from two solo laners. They'll smack each other a few times, but until they join the fight, it won't make a big deal. Do you think this is going to be one, especially because, again, Fine OK is going to give a little bit of trouble to Nika and vice versa. Is it going to be more to expect, or do you think he's right? I, I He's pretty on point. Nika would definitely know that matchup better than most, <laughs> especially since you can tell there's a lot of familiarity and respect between these two players, and it, it's kind of expected because they, they both kind of come up at the same time in, in my mind gore especially mm -hmm. in, in the eyes of the public they have both certainly established themselves as very prominent solo laners and i think the same argument could be had for just about every solo laner right now in the spl it's an extremely competitive role uh, amongst every single team and I, I do find it interesting though that he mentioned that we could probably anticipate some more uh, of the expected King Arthur Kakolin shakedowns and I think that that largely just alludes to the fact that both of these teams kind of have their attention focused elsewhere when it yeah. comes to the bands for the team composition. And they're not too worried about this amount of control but you can see I think both highlights very aptly showing the Kukulin and the five, the King Arthur <laughs> for both of the solo laners. Mental warfare. Just kind of showcasing that yeah not only can they both play it but they can both play it really well. Just some numbers for you though again against each other Fine OK has won 18 of their 28 games, and so maybe favoring him a little totems? bit. Uh, that one I wish we had. I can tell you, though, 252 wards placed against Nika from Fine OK. Only 250 from Nika there. He's lacking on the ward game here, Nika. I understand your vision <laughs> might cost the game for the Warriors. They lose here. That's the first thing I'll be looking forward to. Well, the extra ward is Nika himself. The, the mobile ward. Oh, right, ward. you're right. He, he, you can and never he counts count as out two. the mobile ward. Yes, yes. He's <laughs> walking zone. around, then if he happens to die, you know, he's got the overhead viewpoint for the team. Uh, Nika, you, Nika, you can always expect him to contribute. I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do. Because, again, I think Solo, it's – I feel like we've been putting a lot more weight on it, but, I mean, look at what Julio and Haddix were able to do in the last set. Look at what Nika and Fine OK are going to be able to do here because we're going to jump into picks and bans for game number one. This has a lot of pressure on it. Again, it's a lose and go home. Yes, best of five. The first game maybe doesn't matter as much. I mean, go look at the Bolts Leviathan set. It was an absolute slap to the Bolts, and yet they were able to bounce back. Taco, something's telling me this one's going to have a different vibe to it. Something's telling me that Sam probably won't get a chance to play Mercury in this set, especially not yeah. after the showing that he had on that god yesterday. Because again, Gore, that is one of the primary advantages that the Oni Warriors have coming into this set outright. They had five different games to essentially break down each aspect of the banning and drafting phase for the Jade Dragons. And we did see some strong adjustments out of the Jade Dragons. They made it very clear to any team watching that set that they are able to recognize where they fall short in their losses and then adjust accordingly. Well, so far, hey, everything tracks with exactly what you would need, right? Heroin, we banned Yanis and Tiamat. Sam, we banned Mercury. Like, we're at least controlling a little bit of that. And again, just trying to make sure that they're locked down enough that you're going to be able to find a little bit of a lead. But they go for a Finrear first pick. That, I mean, it's something, again, flexible. It could go to Sam. More than likely, it goes to Mike. But as a, a an opener, it's not something I really expected. It also 
puts an immediate threat onto the Oni Warriors in case they were debating on picking up a Chiron early on because we have seen a lot of team responses just drafting that Chiron within the first three picks as of late and Fenrir with that Brutalize is going to make that a, a heck of a lot more complicated especially because of the fact that this is a very open-ended pick for the Jade Dragons. They're not really giving anything away just mm -hmm. yet by taking that Fenrir because Fino K can play it, Sam can play it, we know Mike can play it yeah. and again it's, it's more of like a mental game at this point for who comes out on top during this drafting phase. And it's interesting to see as it shakes through because I'm looking at last week's matchup between them and, and the Dragons were the ones. They banned Fenrir all three games against the Warriors, so maybe a little more worried about at least then what they were going to be facing now, showcasing exactly what they have. They also banned things, Fenrir, Fafnir, Ra, I think Tiamat. There there was a lot that came through to try and control it. But hey, Kakul and Chiron, you keep things in the seas for the Warriors here. And that's a really strong start. <laughs> it's definitely a, a very strong start here for both of these teams. And seeing that Nemesis locked in early on as well, making it clear for the J-Dragons that they wanted to prioritize at least their front-line damage. And I also just really like the, the Nemesis paired alongside of the Fenrir. There's certainly a lot of dive potential that could come through and impose a lot of issues for this Chiron, although steady and solid peel from the Sobek and Kakolin, it's just Kakolin maybe not as threatening as what the Sobek could probably be in terms of initiation. Yeah, Sobek definitely going to be someone to be well, problematic throughout all of this one. And they grab the Kakolin, but Nika lied to us outright. Not going to see the Kakolin King Arthur lane, going to get banned out here. For those of you wondering, I did this math. Someone asked it last week between uh, between the phase and now this this playoffs. But it was 12 wins for King Arthur to 9 wins for Kakullen against each other. I think this week made it 10 to 9. Like, Kakullen won one matchup earlier this week. But with King Arthur ban, that's about where they're going to be left. Robin ban as well. Uh, if you're going against Kakullen, you know, if you're the Bolts, we've been seeing Hercules. Where do you go warrior-wise? Well, for Fino, he doesn't necessarily have to dabble into the warrior pool, although there's a chance that he could maybe be looking for the Osiris for himself. Yeah. There's always tier selection as a definite viability. And with the Tsukuyumi, Nika kind of gave us the heads up on the interview that that would be one to look <laughs> out for. And it's, it's, it's very obvious that the Oni Warriors do not want to allow any further die potential because Suki's ultimate, obviously, yeah. one of the better ults for continuing that follow-up chase that the Nemesis, Fenrir, and Denzaburu will be able to provide. But this is putting a lot of strain, I think, onto Hurrywind more than anyone else in the Jade Dragons. Oni Warriors are definitely gunning to make the mid laner uncomfortable. Well, the, the question I have for you then, Hurrywind's been playing a lot of soul lately, had some really good games on it yesterday, but even last week and the week before that was hovering towards it. How does Soul fare against at least the top three so far from the Warriors? Soul wouldn't be a terrible pick. She, I don't think you can ever really go wrong with Soul. It's more so what can Soul or what can the rest of the team do to yeah. kind of elevate that Soul's position throughout a match? Because just like any other mage, if she doesn't have the other f gods surrounding her to kind of protect her, then it, it's got to be just that full commit sort of play style. And, and this screams all or nothing right now from the J Dragons composition because they they are not really looking for that reinitiation. They are looking to get in, get mm -hmm. their kills, and get out. Fafnir is still on the board as a as an option in case this Fenrir isn't intended for Polar Bear Mike because again there is a chance for the flexibility and That's Hades. Fine, okay could potentially be a flex pick. It is something that Fino could certainly work with. I mean, it's I'm having flashbacks to last year. He had, like, in phase one, like, begged his team to let him play it. Played it. Played it well. I think won, and then it was left by the wayside. Nobody touched it ever again. I'm thinking more so <laughs> if he does go for the Hades here, it, it might just be solely to try and harass that Raw because Raw would definitely have yeah. a difficult time looking to escape from a Hades. But it, it is still relatively open-ended. That's the thing that I was trying to emphasize on is the fact that both Nika and Fine OK, they're just so mechanically talented as players that they could go just about anywhere. Although, Alpwash, I'd be a little bit more skeptical with. <laughs> yeah, I can't help but notice all of these are gods that I think have not been played. Alquang, never mind, in the middle there was <laughs> someone who had been played, but the other two definitely haven't been touched up just yet. That Ra on the other side, before we jump onto this Osiris, I will just mention last week they banned it every game against the Warriors. We might find out exactly why, but it's the Osiris soul. No surprises here, nothing really, no trickery afoot for the Dragons. 
yet. We, we've still got to cover all the bases just in case, but yeah. I, I feel like both of us were pretty much on point in terms of taking a gander at, at the Osiris soul, and it just makes sense because Osiris, that Lord of the Afterlife, you want that anti-heal aspect naturally, so when you try to stack more anti-heal with the itemization mm -hmm. choices, it, it is just going to be intended, I think, to try and make mid lane feel as uncomfortable as possible. I'm definitely expecting some early rotations coming out of this set, and set, in fact, I, I think is not been criminally underutilized since the shell nerf, but because of the shell nerf, he, he is definitely a heavy threat, Yeah. especially when you're looking at the Denzaburu. That's the thing, uh, you know, we used to, like, we were used to talking about set. I think week one, he was really, really powerful that we saw him come through. Everyone was talking about him in the rank scene. He, he was just this monster. And then he just died a little bit. He kind of <laughs> disappeared for a little while now, coming through. Finrear, more than likely support going up against the Sobek. You've got the Nemesis set matchup. I feel like there's a lot going on here, but where do you see the, the game kind of layout for these teams? These are extremely strong compositions from both ends, Gore, and they both require a certain level of execution. And I know we talk about the, the high-end execution a lot on the desk here, but it's for good reason. It's because when you're dealing with such high-caliber teams, mm -hmm. you can expect that if one of them manages to get an edge over the other, it becomes incredibly difficult to look for a comeback series. It, it, there's just not a lot of room for recovery because top end players just know how to restrict the map. They know how to restrict the pressure and they will just suffocate the farm. That's a very dangerous game to be playing. I think that we've had a, a little bit of a talking point though on the longevity there, specifically of the set yesterday. So a lot of homework for the Warriors able to do just from day to day and I'm, I'm admit I'm thinking to the future a little bit, but I think either of these teams kind of want to close this out in three so that the bolts don't get the same advantage. Do you think, like, can you see in this, outside of just the bands where it's obvious there's some homework, that the draft the Warriors have is to kind of tackle what they saw to the Dragons yesterday? Somewhat, but at the same time, I think the Oni Warriors kind of came into this set knowing full well that J Dragons aren't really a team that you can ban individual players. Granted, people are always looking at Hurry One trying mm -hmm. to limit his god pool and things like that, but realistically speaking, I think he could play just about any mage, and yeah. I would say the same for just about every single mid laner in the SPL. Well, it'll be really exciting to see this. Again, the Dragons having a little bit of a rough time, lost to the Warriors just a week ago, and were pushed to the brink of a loss yesterday, eked it out in five games versus the Titans. Now they get the rematch against the team that took care of them in the group stage, and it's all going to come down to a best of five, Taco. And one quick word. Actually, you know what? Not even to you. We'll go over to the casters for this one. Who can win this one? We've got our own chair mechanic leading the call. And thank thank God you for – wait, you weren't talking to me? <coughs> I'm the chair mechanic, right? You no, guys see the, the video the where I do all... You're what do you mean? Holder. I was doing the vast majority of the work. Thank God I sprinted in here, right? I had yeah. no time to get on the microphone after I sprinted <laughs> yeah. in here. I was I was pressed for time after, sure uh, after building all of those chairs, every single one of them overnight. Uh, and thank God for the... Was it the... That, whatever mask that was was the fanciest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, you you could go into it. You looked like you were prepared to go into it's all a that zombie elbow invasion, grease, you know. It's all the right. elbow grease I was uh, in the headlight fluid right. that, that was going into those chairs yep, that I had that to, was uh, to shield myself from. But oh, look, I have to get more head headlight fluid. I'm almost out. I'm headed to the the auto store after you want me to go grab. Yeah, some. if you okay, grab great. me some, I'll, yeah. I'll pick up some of that, and I'll also pick up a little J Dragons. <laughs> I don't know. I tried to segue here. J Dragons versus Oni Warriors. So we're gonna find the opponent for the Olympus Bolts in the Grand Finals tomorrow at the end of this one. And the desk brings up a good point here, Agro. The, the Warriors, after a rough start to Season 8, seemingly have gotten their feet under them here a little bit and maybe reached some of that potential. We figured they would. They beat the Jade Dragons the last time. These two teams faced off. Should be a good one here in this final semifinal. First of all, I, I, as I told you before the set, Dave, I'm in a mood, so you can't be surprised at whatever energy I'm oh, bringing no, I'm to you. But in general about this set, I, I obviously the the Oni Warriors played their best smite of the year by far last week, but they did it up against this Jade Dragons team as you mentioned, and I like the adjustments the Dragons have already made in their picks and bans. The Yamoja ban made a lot of sense to me. I thought the Neil was a huge problem on that, and they managed Neil on this Sobek pick very well. Yep. On the other hand, so I like the changes that the Jade Dragons have made, and you heard them say it on the desk. They consistently took this raw away from Dardes. I've seen Dardes look much better on a lot of picks as of late. I don't think it's just Raw exclusive, though he is obviously fantastic yep. on it. I, I like the adjustments uh, in what they've done. 
I'm just interested to see what the Oni Warriors, how, how much more fleshed out are their strategies? Because you know the Dragons have spent a lot of time working on their picks and bans coming off of that loss. I just hope the Oni Warriors didn't think, yeah, we beat them last time. You know, we're, we're going to be okay. Right, you don't want to go into it. A little cocky on either end, and Neoma maybe getting cocky so early, and smart. PBM brutalizes in. And down goes Neil for the first blood here in this game. We figured this support matchup would maybe be the most important in driving that early game. And then you get a Fenrir versus a Sobek. Talk about some early aggression. Whereas the Jade Dragon's feeling a little bit more comfortable two minutes in. Just so smart from Mike to, to wait in play off Panda's taunt coming in. Because Neil blinked and looked like he got bl he blink plucked Panda Cat in that moment. It looks at least, you know, just look at the Relic situation. Panda with the quick beads. Mike probably immediately hit that Sunder, and then yep. they played off each other's CC really, really well. And that is such a deadly 2v2 for Danzaburo and Fenrir. That's a ton of early damage and a lot of crowd control. Oh, now Sam for soccer. He's been doing this a lot in the early game. Finishes off the speed buff and might be able to finish off Kubo Fred, but instead Fred will teleport away. But at what cost? You lose 70% of your HP bar and your speed buff. Some early aggression from Sam for soccer on the Oni Warrior side of the jungle. And look at where Hurry is. He's trying to solo out the enemy red, and he did so successfully. Wow. Now, he might need some assistance based on where the rest of the team is coming to collapse. Mike is there for that assistance, but Neil is going to cut off this escape path, disapparate use, but the rest of the Oni Warrior is leaving as PBM is in the back line there. Hurry wins still taking a lot of damage from Neil Ma here, but not enough of a reinforcement impending from the Oni Warriors to force anything further. And that's a big swing here in this game. It, it's kind of a, a one-man show on both of those jungle buff invades, both of them successful for relatively low cost. Yeah, I love the, the patience from Hurry not using the purification beads. That, you know, he's getting chased by two people, and you get plucked back in. You think, of course, he's going to have to beads, but almost certainly you imagine that's communication from Mike saying, yo, you're good, they're not chasing, don't beads, you're, you're going to be okay and good trust from Hurry on that invade as well. So a very good start to this game for the Jade Dragons. They get a kill and duo yep. for first blood. Then they invade two of the buffs, the, the two inner buffs at that for the Oni Warriors and slow down the, the pressure. And oftentimes when you can get speed in red, that means that you're going to get mid camp control as well because it's easier for you to get there on time with the speed yep. buff and you're going to do more damage to end up securing it, of course, with the red buff. So that, that should be the next step here for the Dragons is guaranteeing mid lane control. Well, nothing's compounded fully just yet. Called about a half level lead Sanford Soccer had over Kivo Fred. Hurry wind over Dardes there as well as both Kivo and Dardes take over to level 5. So everyone's got their ultimates available. PBM has been an absolute journeyman in the first few minutes of this game, ushering Hurry wind out away from the impending Oni Warriors collapse there, but now makes his way right back over to Duo. So important on this Fenrir, once you hit that level five, find some of that pressure. Ra's gonna have to make full use of the, that move speed and, uh, and those beads in order to get away from some of these Ragnaroks as PBM takes over to level five. And, and uh, I'm just a little surprised that they go with the Ra pick because of this Fenrir selection, not even worrying about the level five, but just Sunder into Brutalize is gonna be problematic. Mike leaps on in, but Neil Ma with a Tail Whip will slow down PBM. Sanford Soccer looking for the red buff invade here. Hurrywin backs away a little bit, has rotated over on into this one, but a good old solo invade good successful dance. by Sanford Soccer. Dodges out most of the damage and no chance for a searing pain on the back end. That's so important for Sam to dodge out that little bit of burst damage that the Warriors could have provided and really prevents any sort of follow up from Dardes. So another red buff going on over towards the Jade Dragons. And that's going to start to affect Dardes pretty quickly in this game because that's a normal, consistent place for farm as a mid laner and if you aren't getting it you know you, you've only gotten one red through five and a half minutes if he loses a third one in a row then you're going to be in a pretty precarious position especially on a character like raw that feels so good <laughs> where you get ahead where you feel like you can just barrel stuff the one you can just walk up with the two and start to deal a ton of damage if your one isn't really chunking yep. you're not doing a whole lot of damage at all in these team fights. So Ra's one of those characters that normally can get ahead because of his lane pressure and how well he clears the wave. But in this situation, that's not happening quite yet for Dardes. They've slowed him down. And that's exactly what the Jade Dragons hope to do. They hope to boost up their speed as they like to and keep the Oni Warriors a bit in check. Cubo Fred, maybe has eyes for fine. Okay, here's the Osiris. Will use the ultimate to go ahead and leap away, keep himself alive here in this lane. Still been quiet in recent matches over in the solo lane outside of little moments like that. But maybe something worth talking about here in uh, in recent matchups, Agro, is uh, 
as the mask start has started to become a little bit more popular, going up against something a little bit more traditional here in this game with the blue stone for Nika. It seemed like Final K got convinced of it almost <laughs> mid-set up against the Tartarus Titans because Benji was doing it since game one. And then by game five, Final K had stopped going for starter items and instead had elected to go with it instead. Nika decides to go blue stone. I'm kind of on the fence still, Dave. I mean, it. yes, it's cheap 40 power, and that does feel good. But the HP 5 on, on Blue Stone is important in that lane. It lets you get some, some semblance of sustain. It, it does end up, it, it does come with a cost. I don't think it's yep. completely free. But if the enemy, if the enemy soul laner doesn't play around it, then it does end up snowballing that lane really quickly. So I'm sure it feels really good in ranked and in scrims where they might not be willing to respect your 40 power at level 1. In competitive, I'm a little bit less sold. Yeah, it might right. get you a little bit of extra lane pressure because they have to respect you early. But ultimately, I don't think it's really making that much of mm -hmm. a difference in the early game. It tends to get sold off later, picked up different starter items somewhere else in the build. Yeah, and it's not like it's bad, right? right. I, I just don't not. think there's a major difference between it and a starter item. So I'm not offended if you go starter or fighter. Right, not breaking the solo lane, but Neoma's health bar seems to be broken as Sanford Soccer will rotate in, drop the ultimate and grab the kill, but the rocket back in from Panda Cat gets vote <laughs> under execute threshold, and Panda Cat hops on away. And talk about the re-engage potential of this rocket from the Don Zaburo. And, and not only how goofy, in a good way, it looks kind of flying on in there, but I think maybe caught vote a little off guard. Yeah, I mean, what is he supposed to do in that position? He full dashed away, and Chiron has a long dash. It doesn't take him that, you know, he's not super fast, but it goes for right. a long distance. And it's still just not enough to disengage from this Dan Zaburo. Vote alts at the right time. Maybe should have just beads and then tried to juke out the following autos from Panda Cat. Maybe he survives in that instance. But then he's down his beads, and, and that's about it. I suppose I'd rather have that, though, than Panda get another kill or assist underneath his belt because this is exactly where Dan Zaburo feels yep. incredibly oppressive. In, in exactly situations like that, how is Vote going to get away? Whatever, Panda Cat can just... Hold W, disregard U, disregard the wave, and just go for kills basically every single wave. Now that he has one kill and two assists in less than nine minutes, Vote is going to have some trouble in this lane. There's 1.1k of net worth differential now that Panda Cat has wow. over Vote. Fully stacked transcendence versus non completed transcendence, matching on the boots, and then one tier of what tends to be an executioner or something of the like. A little bit later on now. Sam for Sokka looking over towards Nika. Stun Awkward. connects from fine, okay. Had the ultimate drop down. I guess Nemesis provides you that ability, stripping away some of those protections to maybe find some pressure, maybe find a kill on one of these solo laners. But Sam not confident enough this time to fully complete the dive. I think if fine, okay, had his Gaia completed at that point, he would have gotten a big Gaia proc from getting ulted by Nika because that's what's obviously going to happen. You know, fine's going to ult in off the stun. Yep. Nika will ult right away. If you get knocked up underneath that tower, you're going to end up taking a lot of damage. And Fine was sitting on Gaia 2 at the time, so he doesn't get that big boost of, of health regen. If that same sort of play happens now, I think you're going to see Sam commit, especially now that he has a stone cutting and is going to deal some pretty significant damage. Well, the left side of this map continues to feel lopsided in favor of the J Dragons. That's maybe why you see PBM showing some face. And Panacat wants to dive the Tier 1 tower with his rocket. Instead, we'll just do half of Neoma's HP as a little bit of damage on the back end. They're supposed worth prodding out a little bit, seeing what you can find. Instead, it's going to buy space for the J-Dragons on this Gold Fury. Neoma blinks over the wall. Under the water he goes, but he will not steal it away. It's some damage down from Hurry Window, though, that gets Neoma nearly dead, but instead it's Vote from Range, wow. who finds a first kill on the Sam for Soccer. Polar Bear Mike on an island, all on his own, likely to be the second kill, and Vote's got a double. That's huge, and Nika's looking for Hurry as well, but disapparates right on time. Fine, okay. Doesn't have to worry about something like that for Neil Ma. He'll be able to cut him down. He's got the slows on vote here as well, but it is Fino K okay against the Oni Warriors. But Fino doesn't care. He will not go under the tower, but will rotate on over from Solo, pick himself up a kill. So the J Dragons, they get the Fury, they get a kill, but they lose two in the meantime. So close for Sam. He nearly was able to clean up Fred. I mean, that ultimate came in at the perfect time and nearly was able to chew through him, but Fred with a really good engage into quick disengage was at the right spot with that Kingslayer, able to clean up a little bit. Ultimately, I think the Dragon's still happy with it, though. I mean, they get a couple kills as well. They get the Gold Fury. They're able to keep the, the tempo in their favor. I think a lot of times, especially in the early game, 
if you trade completely even, in a situation like that, I would consider completely even. Being the ones that are at least forcing it, I like. I was hoping Panda Cat. I think Panda Cat may be seeing if Vote were going to stick around somewhere yep. there in lane had Vote been there. The two level differential and still a slight item lead. Now, full item lead is the Aussie, is the second item now for Panda Cat. Likely would have meant to kill over on the Vote. That rocket does some sneaky damage, doesn't it? You, oh. you think of it as kind of this initiation tool, but I think connects on you and suddenly you're down a giant chunk of HP. Don Zaburo jumps on out of it, and you're getting auto-attacked a few times down into the grave. Exactly. You're getting barrel-stuffed by this little raccoon that you can't, <laughs> that you just can't get away from because then he's putting down his little bamboo field, and he's got true haste in there, and you can't auto-trade him. And even if you do, he's, getting, he's taking reduced damage from auto-attacks. If he's able to close that gap, right. then you've lost. And that's why this pick has been so successful when it gets leads because you just will not outbox his damage, outbox his CC, and be able to get away from him. You have to try and put him behind, and then that that gap close does not become a particularly good disengage. It does not become a particularly good uh, disengage and escape tool, and you can just get on top of him yep. and really make his life difficult come the team fighting stage. And that's why, I mean, I think a lot of teams, it, when you get into the late game team fighting phase, you have to make a choice on which backliner you want to focus out. Who are we initiating on? Who are we prioritizing? Agro or Barracuda. Big, right, right, exactly, and that, that should be an obvious answer, and we all know it. The The thing is is that you got to save your key cooldowns for one of those two guys, and I think we've seen a lot of teams really prioritize mid laners more in Season 8 than Hunters, and, and they're trying to, to allow their, their backliners to then just escape from the Hunter and then and guarantee that they're killing the Mage. But I think up against Danza, that should be the guy you're focusing because he's not that hard to, to lock down given the right opportunity. And if he's in the wrong position, and Panda you know is going to position fairly aggressively, if the only Warriors can get on top of this Danza Burrow, feel like that's going to be an easy way to neutralize him yep. come late game. Because if, he, if you just let him sit in the back, toss out those bottles, you know, spread out so that intoxicate, shoot out the rocket at the very end, then it, it's not gonna do, it's not gonna go well for you. Interesting, Vote stops the back of Polar Bear Mike, who has to leap away, Brutalize use Pluck is there, and now Kivo Fred on the board here. Panda Cat maybe being dove out, instead it's the rocket channeled, but not ridden on by Panda Cat, so the Don Zaburo and no real threat. But finally, the Oni Warrior showing some of that cohesiveness we know they have to complete a kill onto PBM. Really smart play by Vote, not putting himself out of position in order to stop that back and guaranteeing that it's going to be a one for zero. And it's perfect timing by the Oni Warriors because the Jade Dragons have both buffs up on that left-hand side. So they get purple and red and that kill on Mike in exchange for just a Pyromancer on the right. That's a big win for the Oni Warriors. And and, and a uh, it, they're the ones initiating. You right. know, they're, they're, they're the ones being aggressive. And uh, if you've heard me talk at all about Smite in the last five years, you know that, that that's, no, where I think, that's where I think you should be. It shouldn't be sitting around and waiting for the enemy team to, to mess up or overstep and make mistakes. You want to be the ones being the initiators. And J Dragons tend to be that way, but the Oni Warriors showing that they can do it as well here. Still find themselves about 3K in the hole up against the J Dragons. So despite the recent interactions, the J Dragons still in a very comfortable spot here. Things quieted down from PBM from what we saw in the earlier game. Not that he hasn't been searching, but just hasn't quite found the same opportunities just yet. Interesting build here from Sanford Soccer, looking auto attack based, I guess, in the items, but yeah. then more ability based potentially out of the boots there. But Shadow Steel Shuriken hmm. picked up early on here for the Nemesis. I mean, we know Sam likes to go crit on Nem, uh, that adapting style of, of Nem gameplay, just trying to get in there and, and really burst out the opposition. And you need some anti heal. Up against Dardes on the raw, and of course you've got that set to worry about as well. Panda Cat sends some shots Neilma's way, lurking in the waters, gets used here. Fine, okay, is rotated over from the solo lane as well. Primal Fury spawned up, so this will likely be the first time we see all five members of both teams kind of collapsing in on one another. Relic situation, a little bit better off for the Jade Dragons as the Oni Warriors jungler, Kivo Fred, has both down, and then Neilma missing his blank for the next 15 or so seconds, but likely something the Oni Warriors will play around. It's Fred definitely needs his relics before he can get involved because the Danza CC alone would stop his dive basically single-handedly. Wonder if the Oni Warriors can afford to wait that long because the Dragons have excellent objective burn between the Soul, yep. Danza, and Nemesis. You're going to be able to knock down that Primal Fury fairly quickly. 
Wonder if they're, the Warriors are going to try and step up and get some wards down, but they don't have any in inventory, and I don't think they only have m maybe one hidden underneath the Gold Fury that I can see. Otherwise, they might not have any vision at all on that Gold Fury pit. They were relying on the right. Oracles, but those fell away. They did fall away, but both teams kind of pull away from the Fury this time around. Sam for Soccer looking towards the mid lane. Been quiet. We wondered if Dardes would maybe feel a little bit of pressure in this game on the raw from Polar Bear Mike, from Hurrywind, from Sam for Soccer. Hasn't necessarily been the case, though the J Dragons now rotate on back towards the Primal Fury. Oni Warriors replying, but how quickly can they do it? Dardes from the back line might send an ultimate flying through, but the J Dragons secure the Fury. Ultimate in from Vote from the left hand side. Does a little damage, but finds nothing. Polar Bear Mike with the opening kill though, and it's on to Neuma, the rocket used by Panda Cat, but that's only disengaged, and only final okay K left for the Dragons. Yeah, but he's got four to contend with, still holding on to the ultimate, half HP, not a care in the world for the young solo laner for the Jade Dragons, and uh, that's Dardes exactly what I'm talking about. You can't, you just cannot give the Dragons that much of a window with this style of composition. This is a little bit late for, for a Primal Fury play, those scale up throughout the game in terms of defense and, and health, and, and they do so on respawn. So if you le le let one sit for a long time, then it's going to be pretty squishy. And you've got crit in the build for Sam for soccer. You've got you had three full items done for Panic Cat at that point. Three full items done yep. for Heroin on the Soul. Think that that was just a miscalculation by the Oni Warriors on what their window realistically is once these once the Jade Dragons pull this Fury, and that was with Mike not having upgraded Frenzy yep. at that point. Now that he's yeah, got he it, level down, you right? have to be cognizant of that come Fire Giant time because Fire Giant's not going to last that much longer than that Primal Fury did. And the Oni Warriors have the best secure on the map. They've got the raw snipe. They've got the, the, the steel potential, no doubt. But you've still got to be in position right. in order to make it happen. That's a good point. Dardes didn't use his ult there throughout that fight. I didn't necessarily see I don't think what was happening all. on the back line. Uh, it was still up at the end, so maybe someone yeah. from the Jade Dragons uh, sort of jumped on the raw there, prevented him from using it, but maybe tilts the scales in the sense of a steal, but the health bar is still full enough at the end of that for the Jade Dragons that likely wouldn't have finished off a kill. Sam for Soccer makes his way on over to the left, but the rest of the Dragons are here as well. Cubo Fred has to leave. There's the Searing Pain. It connects onto Hurrywind. And so that's a good heat check on about what you can expect from this raw snipe here 18 minutes in. Yeah, it feels good, but it also is good information for Hurry about how much damage that he's going to take for it. I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of damage checking on low cooldown abilities and ultimates like Searing Pain. Feels good for Dardes to know exactly how much, no, oh, excuse me, how much Dardes is going to do and how much Hurry's going to take. So now he knows, well, if I'm this HP and I hear raw snipe going off, I think I could probably hold it. Right. In, in, those those damage numbers kind of stay in your head for a good while. It's Charon's coin, Divine Ruin for Dardes. So by the end of this game, that Searing Pain will be connecting for some serious damage. Bit of a soft defense here from the Oni Warriors. Nothing really to play for underneath that Tier 1 tower. Likely not enough to throw away your life. Not when you're 5, 6k gold down here in this game. This is where the J Dragons start to compound that interest, though. They build up this wow. early game lead. And they want an FG in sub-20 minutes. Everyone from the Oni Warriors is on the map. They Frenzy have, gets used. It. Vote in the back line, but Polar Bear Mike joins them. Jade Dragons take down the FG quickly. Dardes was not in range to steal that one away. It's a big knockup from Nika, though, on the back end. PBM wants to disengage, but Final K has other ideas. Oh, big snipe from Dardes. Good A gets from Hurrowind, but he's just trying to get into that Corporeal form. Oh, man, Cubo Fred is melting away, but he's taking one with them. But PBM immediately trades on back. Nika starting to roar through this fight. He's got himself a double. Is fine, okay, left with four of the Oni Warriors. Sam for Soccer can't join on this fight either, but it's double blink, big block back in. Fine, okay, brought into the fray, and the Oni Warriors find another. I'm just so confused, Dave. The Dragons did it. They got the Fire Giant. They had all five members. They just had to turn and leave, but the Dragons just kept wanting to go in. It felt like it was fine, okay, really pushing that pace to try and chase Nika. That's the Kakulin, who still had everything up at that point. Just a really, really greedy call from the J Dragons. Their, their eyes get bigger than their stomach on that play. And, and really, I was going to spend that whole time chastising the Warriors for falling for the same problem twice. Whoever's, you know, right. you got to have someone on your team saying, hey, they did that gold really quickly. We cannot let them sit around on that fire giant. We just can't. We've, yep. we've got to get there on time for things like fire and for furies. And the Warriors, I mean, Neil is sitting up by back camps. Nika's by blue. They might be on it, they might not. I mean, they just gave the Dre Dragons way too much of a window, and the Dragons could have just walked away with it. Yeah. But instead, they decided they only needed it on two members because Fine OK Polar Bear Mike and, importantly, 
Panda Cat now don't have Fire Giant, and in Panda's case, has no relics for over a minute at this point. So you're really losing a, a significant portion yep. of this Fire Giant power play. And that was minus 3,000 gold for the Jade Dragon so far on this power play. It was about 4,000 XP. Nika with a big double kill pulls himself ahead of Fine OK over there on the solo lane levels, reached level 20 now on this Kulkullen. Can't imagine, Agro. Yeah, there, there's two minutes left on this buff or Sam for Soccer or Hurry Win, but unlikely we really see the Dragons do much with it. I mean, Hurry having it is a big deal. He's going to do a lot of your tower damage anyways, so having that buff on him does matter quite a bit. But I like this play from the Warriors. You should be playing up right now. Panda's a sitting duck. Poor Bear Mike jumps in onto Vote, but there is just way too much peel. A lot of it in damage from the Oni Warriors on the back end. So now Poor Bear Mike is going to have to consider how he wants to jump in. This is a Gold Fury. This will bring the Oni Warriors a little bit closer as far as gold goes in this game if they are able to confirm it. Everyone in position this time around. Nothing getting snuck away over the Oni Warriors this time. Gold Fury pulled but immediately reset. The Jade Dragons now the ones who start up the Fury on their side. Polar Bear Mike still half HP. That's something you're going to have to consider here in this fight as things go on. Certainly have to worry about that. Uh -oh. Beast Hunter, huge engage. And it's a three-man knockup. But Nika, where'd your health bar go, my friend? You could ask the same before you win. It's another disengage rocket from Panda Cat. PBM still looking to fight his way in, but instead, the J Dragons will retreat. Really good ultimate from Panda Cat, and the fact that Dart as a snipe did not do as much as the Warriors wanted. You cannot ask for more from Nika on that play. He got a flawless yep. blink engage. I Perfect. think Dart as a snipe has got to be a little bit better there. Gold Fury now started up again by the Oni Warriors. Here, Hurry Wind is here to weave some auto attacks in. Final K around the backside. Half HP on the objective as Panda Cat works his way into the pit as well. Final K blinks on through. Lord wow. of the Afterlife up, down. That one's found three here as well. The back line scattering for the Oni Warriors, but you could say the same for the front line. Neomaz health bar gone. Votes life gone. Cubo Fred follows him shortly after. It's a salmon leap, but a double kill from Panda Cat and the Jade Dragons pull three. Okay, so Final K might have baited the team into a really bad fight after Fire Giant, but he makes up for it right there with a blink Lord of the Afterlife onto both Dardes and Vote. And while that's a great play for Fine, that is an absolute mistake by the Oni Warriors. Yes, your backliners have to be next to one another. They have to be able to peel for each other, but there is no excuse for getting Demand. hit by a small circle like that. Dardes and Neuma, the last two alive for 20 seconds, and they are going to have to survive. Dardes will walk away from the initial engage. Beads get used, but all of the J Dragons work in onto the Titan. The damage rains on down from the Dragons. Game one hangs in the balance, but it hangs no further. J Dragons will take game one. Look, the J Dragons were just in control of that game the whole time. Never did it feel like the Warriors were the ones that were going to be able to start setting the pace. It's just a matter of they've got to not beat themselves in these fights. After that, Fire Giant was obviously a big problem. The Warriors, I mean, it's been the story for them basically all phase. Nika makes a huge play, and the team isn't quite there in order to capitalize on it. Think that, you know, it's a best of five. You've got plenty of time to adjust. I'm not yep. super worried for the Oni Warriors. The Sobek pick for Neil has not looked good the last few times we've seen it, especially against the Jade Dragons. What is his god pool going to look like if they're going to continually ban out that Yamoja that gave them so many problems last week? I think there are, there's kind of a whole basket of of good and bad decisions from both teams yes. here in this game. So if nothing else, seems like we're going to have a contested set on our hands. Jade Dragons, by the skin of their teeth, will take game number one. Quick break. We'll be back with game number two.
Welcome back, everyone, to the SPL playoffs here for Phase 1. Again, powered by Alienware. The Dragons just able to take about a 24-minute game there against the Warriors. A strong performance, but I'm going to harken back to last week. They won Game 1. It's what happens to the rest of the set that's going to matter the most for them. And, of course, they are playing on those beautiful Alienware PCs you hear us talking about all the time, as well as on those really nice Alienware monitors. 240 hertz, that's Better than what I have. I still have an old 60 hertz monitor as one of mine, so maybe I need to upgrade here. Of course, if I wanted to, much like you, I could go to smitegame.com slash alienware, use code SMITEAW, and thanks again to Alienware for being our title sponsor here for Season 8 of the SBL. And Taco, I mean, that one is about what the Dragons would want and what a lot of Dragon fans would expect of them as well. They come in, they get it done, there's a little bit of a flub with a fire giant in between, but you, you, you know, you glance over that, the rest of the game is pretty much theirs. And for the most part, it was definitely a very Dragons-esque fashion with how dominating the performance was out of these guys in Game 1. And you're right, that, that fire giant fight after the fact was a little bit questionable, but as Zagro was able to point out on the cast, a huge redemption arc for Fine OK as he was able to find perfect objective play around that Gold Fury and possibly even a minor slipper from the Oni Warriors because the carries really can't both be getting targeted by a single Lord yeah. of the Afterlife. The AoE on that is really not that huge, but credit to the Dragons where it's due. They definitely just took advantage of the fact that they understood how fast their objective burn really was with this kind of composition. They understood how much control could be created because it was just an all-in commit fashion. It wasn't ever really, even at this final fight around the Gold Fury, it, it was never really about the Fury itself, Gore. It was always about just getting the foot up on the Oni, or leg up on the Oni Warriors for the team fight. And this Danza Burrow we saw a little bit there at the end, but looked pretty good. 4 1 and 4 for Pandacat as he's able to kind of scoop up the kills that his teammates set up for him. But I think it's interesting to, to, to look at it just because there was a lot of focus on mid early on. Still get soul for Heroin. He's pretty happy. There's a lot of focus on solo lane. He just goes Osiris for fine. Okay, it's still pretty happy. And it feels like a lot of the control, at least in picks and bans from the Warriors, didn't really translate to the what they thought would happen there in the game. And instances where the Oni Warriors could have potentially fought back just sort of fell short. We saw some great moments, I think, from Nika, where he had potentially really strong teamfight initiations for the Oni Warriors. They were just never really able to capitalize. The follow-up after the fact was just not on the mark. And when you're not able to actually connect with some of those big burst abilities like that raw snipe, it, it just gets a little bit too difficult, I think, to try and battle back into the pressure from the J-Dragons. Well, the Warriors here, after losing game one, have opted, as you can see behind me, to be first pick in game number two and picks and bans here. So a lot of pressure, I think, on them to figure out what they want to change out. A couple of interesting bans, again, uh, things that made it through the Fenrir, the Raw, were banned a lot last week when they played each other, but they were the ones taking care of the Yanis, the Mercury, the Tiamat. Maybe they let Tiamat through, but that's just because they could force the Dragons to potentially ban it. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of wiggle room for them here in the top three. I would imagine that for the J-Dragons, one of the only switch-ups I might expect for the banning phase, at least, is potentially stripping away that Fenrir now that they are not in that first pick position to try and utilize it as such an open-ended flex pick. The only Warrior still staying on their original message to the J-Dragons jungle mid. Sam's not going to get to play Mercury. Hurry will probably never touch Hurry or Giannis for the rest of this season even, <laughs> unless some very significant nerfs take place that I just can't imagine why any team would want to allow him to have that god pick. But the front line for the Oni Warriors in the last game, Sobek just was not really able to get it done. Wouldn't be surprised if Neil ended up just forfeiting that pick or could potentially go back to it without the soul on the board. It, it just, it's, it's tough because Sobek is in such a fickle position at times where you don't want to be too dependent on, on Sobek's initiation, but unfortunately for the Oni Warriors, Jade Dragons were just applying so much map pressure, it was kind of forcing Neil's hand into having to get into the mix to try and create an opening for his team. They just punished him every single time for it. Well, they're changing up a lot of the bands here, in fact. Not only Soul taking the place of where Tiamat was prior 
Baravan taking the place of where Gilgamesh was prior. So both of those available. Gilgamesh goes over the Tiamat here, the opposite of what we saw earlier when the bolts locked in. So I would expect, yeah, Hurrowin to have a pretty easy choice for mid this time around. And I, I gotta just pick your brain. Which one do you think is more worth it? Like, do you think it's better to get that Tiamat? I, I like the Tiamat specifically because of the fact that it's followed up by the Fenrir. And this looks like a very comfortable draft so far from the Jade Dragons. I don't feel as though this is two god options that they would ever want to have to give up. This is probably exactly what they were hoping to happen because Gilgamesh tends to struggle against gods with good escapes. And Tiamat, Fenrir, they both have leaps available for them to create some distance, making a lot of Gilgamesh's potency mm -hmm. kind of fall to the side. Well, they're blasting through these ones. Cullen, Chiron, both on the side of the Warriors last game weren't enough on their own to make things work. But now they got the Gilgamesh beside them. Danzaburo, Fenrir, very same story. We're there for the Dragons. And the Tiamat coming in for Hurwind feels like it just kind of fits together really nicely here. Of course, if Hurwind's happy, I think everybody on the Dragons is happy. And they're even starting to take some shots over there towards the mid lane. The Morgan wouldn't be surprised if Ra even shows up up there. And Penzaburu is definitely one of his more preferred selection choices. It's very obvious that Panicat has zero concerns about having to actually deal with that Chiron in the laning phase itself. Nika on the Kakolin again is, is a wise choice, though, for the Oni Warriors. And no real surprises here. Well, actually, I am a little bit surprised. I, I take that back. Jay Dragon's actually banning the Fafnir from themselves. Yeah. Possibly some concerns that Nilma might have been looking to snap lock that in the fourth pick choice. And it makes me think even more so seeing that up there. If Mike's not playing it, Mike's probably going back on Fenrir. Mike's not, <laughs> Mike's not yes. thinking about any Guardians right now. And so they're trying to control the Warriors a little more. This next band may be even more crucial. A little over a minute for the Warriors to figure this one out. And then probably some bank time. No, they're in the bank time now. So they're burning it as fast as they can. But this well, is the one where, I mean, do you go for the jungle? And I guess the answer is yes. They went for Pele. Pele is going to be removed, set still, open-ended, but I can't imagine that Cubo would really feel all that comfortable with wanting to take the set back. Again, it, it just didn't really seem like the set was ever able to actually look for that backline dive opportunity. Just a lot of mobility from the carries out of the J-Dragons and yeah. to kind of escape a lot of that set threat. And plus, J-Dragons were also just doing an excellent job with their target focus in general. They made sure to just kill the front line first almost every single time from the Oni Warriors until they were eventually able to just transition their leads from punishing the front line into just sitting on top of the back line. Mm -hmm. And if the carries never really have an opportunity to deal damage, Set can't ever look for that cleanup crew factor. Well, they grab that Osiris. Like you said, Set has actually the lowest damage of the last game. Osiris, one of the most prominent picks of last game. So kind of keeping the scales in balance here as they lock it in. The Warriors have to figure things out, though. Gilgamesh is a little bit of a fresh twist, and now so is the Terra, someone that we've seen, again, bouncing in two games every now and then she's just kind of picked up as this like third tier support where everyone's like well I can't think of anything else here Garrett would be good and they lock her in alongside a new wah of all things I mean Taco I said they need to change it up and they did. And this is a change up for sure, Gore, but one thing I'm really looking at here between these two compositions is that there is a lot more early to mid game presence wow. from this Jade Dragons composition in comparison to that of the Oni Warriors. And Nuwa specifically, it's, it's kind of a do or die scenario here for Dardes. And if he ever, typically you like the Nuwa because she has easy applications of Anti Hill, for example. She also just has a, a decent visual that she can give to the entire team. But any time, that her ultimate isn't available, she's basically a sitting duck. And it puts a lot of pressure onto Neil Maw, onto Nika, to then try and play that bodyguard factor. And I I'm just not really sold on how well this new wall is going to be able to fare yeah. against the likes of a Fenrir, yep. an Osiris, <laughs> an Amir. There is just so much cutoff available for the J Dragons draft here. I mean, a lot of control, and I, what I think I love the most about this draft is the Dragons going forward with it. The Fenrir is so ambiguous. We know that Mike likes to play it. You would even mention it, like, in game one. They've got three people who will play this Fenrir and will play it happily and very easily, and they call that bluff here, moving it to what I'm going to assume is the jungle Osiris solo when the Ymir, I mean, banned literally all of last set, refused to let it through, and he goes 10th pick here. 
even though we know how prominent and how strong this is going to be. And that's one of the best parts about this flex pick, though, for the Jade Dragons, is that Fenrir just is so ambiguous. You don't know who's going to be the one actually taking it, and the Jade Dragons kind of have the luxury of deciding which member it would actually suit best based off of what the Oni Warriors choose to respond with in the composition. I'd almost say that their top three choices were, were definitely solid options, but I, I do have some concerns for how well this Terra and New Wall are going to fare because we saw so much focus already in yeah. game number one against Neil Maw and Dardes, and I can imagine it'd be more or less the same with the frontline core that we see from the Jade Dragons now. I mean, they have an easy target, right? And they know exactly where they're going to be putting a lot of their pressure. Jungle Fenrir, you had already mentioned how well he's going to be able to chase down that new wall, let alone when you start to factor in all those other guys. The Dragons feel like they've got a little bit of a leg up here in the draft. But is this something they can kind of steamroll? I mean, they got a really, really good start there in game one, nice and quick, a couple of bumps in the way, but can they continue that route? If Oni Warriors are able to hold on to at least the mid-game aspect, I think that then we could really see some of those big damage numbers coming through for the Oni Warriors backliners. But at the same time, Gore, it's just going to be tough because we know what the Jade Dragons are capable of execution-wise, and this is a, a comp that I think really permits them to play that super aggressive early to mid-game style that they love. Well, the Warriors were able to turn it around just a week ago in the group stages. Can they do it again? Or will the Dragons take the lead? Let's go to the casters and find out. M1 back and forth, but the Dragons able to take it in a swift 24 minutes. Oni Warriors showing signs of life, though, and that's what you needed to see in game number one. If you're an Oni Warriors player, of course you'd like a win. But uh, the momentum, at least not uh, drastically shifted towards the Dragons just yet. Now, if game one gets copied and pasted over here into game two, it's going to be a tough climb for the Oni Warriors back in to this set. Neoma on the Terra. Chilling out in base just a little bit. Oh, delaying the minions, yes, Zagra. What's the, uh, what's the tech at play here? Trying to yeah. avoid some early pressure on your side of the map, maybe. Yeah, the old Amelzy special on this Terra, trying to delay your wave. And it just forces the enemy wave to come closer. And it ideally lets, lets one of your minions die before they can get there. Because remember, you're trying to get into the lane right as those minions get killed. And so you can soak that XP from one of them. Now maybe you're, you're, one of their minions definitely won't die because you won't have as many minions hitting them, so you're guaranteed to get all three minions. But it ends up not really making a huge difference to just make sure that both teams get all three melees, but even that can be kind of big a deal. How much coordination does that require with like my hunter? Should I go into a ranked game and immediately do that? Yeah, you could, um, but there's a decent chance your hunter goes, WTF are you doing? Yeah. Uh, Get over towards purple, you yep. stupid support. Yep. And you know what, Dave? At some degree, uh, <laughs> they're right. You know. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's a, to some degree. Right. And you know, my mind's still at the uh, the headlight fluid store. Had to pick up some snake oil on the way back, and I was just got got sidetracked you're along the way. Wait, your snake's running low on oil. It is. Oh my god. I actually have a bridge to sell you if you've got some time to, yeah, uh, to listen to it. I need one. <laughs> you, you need a bridge. Sam for soccer is the one playing the Fenrir this game, and he's already got <laughs> aggression and some damage in on Nadardes. There's no stun available, but there is oh. a loot. But Sam for soccer stunned against the wall, and Cubo Fred picks up first blood. Cue the watch out, watch out, watch out, because Cubo Fred was coming around the corner oh, with, the drop, <laughs> with the drop kick perfectly timed. Love that little interaction. I mean, Nuwa does not have a lot of tools to get a Fenrir off of her, so I like the idea from Sam to just try and get in there and be the solo agent, do it all on his own. But when you when Nua goes into that stealth, it it temporarily, even when she's getting hit, it temporarily does put her in that stealth fog, and that makes the Fenrir brutalize break. So that's that's what Dart has used right there. Made sure that the Dart the, the brutalized didn't just absolutely 100 to zero him from that position because it basically would have, and then they're able to clean up Sam pretty easily. I gotta say, now you got my mind on on good WWE calls. One uh -huh. of my favorites is as God is my witness, he is broken in half. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm desperately trying to find a way to weave that into a into a cast. And Let's see who's gonna be the one doing it. Uh, maybe maybe a full panda combo in on someone. You know, he rockets in, right. he he tosses the bag at him, he, he makes him drunk, taunts him back in. Right. Maybe, maybe that's the play for that call. Here it's going to happen eventually. We're all going to forget about it. I won't do it this game, but then okay. later on in this set, maybe I bring it out, and then everyone's going to laugh at the callback. And uh, all my friends were laughing. Right. Uh, everyone was standing up and clapping. You uh, found out you won the lottery won at the, the same lottery. time. Right, right. Yeah, Jessica Alba's waiting for you at your apartment. That's weird, but okay. Super she weird. But to hang out. That's well, fine. Well, I just moved out, so it's my, my parents' house now. <laughs>
<laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> We got us off track already. I yeah, know, sad for me. Uh, look, the, the duo lane already feeling a little better, I think. Nice class. For the Oni Warriors, as Neumont gets leaped on by Sam for soccer to stun on the back end. Oh, Neil dashes no, right back no. through. Oh, the three man knockback from Foden. Neumont lives on. Are you kidding me? The Oni Warriors somehow surviving. Man, Neil just got saved by vote, then got then saved himself with a great stun, then got screwed by Panda's taunting, then got saved by vote. Again, an absolute roller coaster of emotions there for Neil Ma because his dash goes the wrong way. Sometimes when you get taunted, it, it, it pulls your camera in that direction. And when you think that you've been able to swing it back towards where you were preemptively trying to dash, it, eats your, it, it takes your old camera position and then takes that input and it gets a little wonky. So you end up dashing the wrong way. And that's what ends up happening there to Neil. That's why he just dashed in the middle of nowhere, but then vote with a great knockback yep. as you called is able to save his life. Certainly worth Mike and Sam's time. I mean, Sam's falling a little bit behind in farm, but that's to be expected with him falling for first blood. At the same time, you still get the beads out from Neil. You still force him back to base. You set him a little bit further behind. Definitely like how active Sam has been, despite it not resulting in any kills. That's what you want early here on this Fenrir, and that's all without the Ragnarok online. Sam for soccer just one level away. That said, Hugh of Fred able to get first blood, able to farm up in the meantime while Sam paid some attention over to the duo lane. Already ticked on over to level 5, but you, you imagine Sam for soccer is the all, not all that far off from re reaching level 5 himself. Nearly cast or cursed myself there, saying, mm. well, it's been kind of quiet for, for Numa on vote. We know how this Don Taburo lane can go if, if Donza gets ahead. And Sam for soccer tried to make that happen, but vote able to stay in it. So from a state of equity, I guess is the right word. That's still kind of a similar matchup in your mind if Densboro can, can jump in your face like that, even if he's not fully ahead. You're probably not still feeling comfortable, but there's a sense of damage in Ma's way. Yeah, there's a lot of damage coming his way, but this time again, the cleanse comes through from Vote, making it look pretty good. I still like the Danza in this matchup in general, but it it's, it's so different for Danza when he gets really ahead compared to when he's even in this lane. And look, that's that's kind of a non-statement. It's the same for every hunter. If they right. get ahead, then it's way better for them. <laughs> no 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 duh, but it for Danza, it's it's definitely a different degree that you just can he can force you to fight on his terms so much better than most other hunters can. PBM and Panda Cat will walk on over towards the Oracles, grab some gold, a little XP, put themselves some vision around the greater Scorpion as well. Intrigued to see how Cubo Fred chooses to play some of this early game here on this Gilgamesh. We've seen Panatom did it a couple of times. We saw it in our previous set as well for, for Lazbra, who kind of got let off the chain a little bit on this Gilgamesh. Been, been such an interesting pick to see work its way into the meta here as Season 8 has continued on. You know, early for me, it was kind of like hit or miss. You see a lot of kills, but usually a lot of deaths. But I, I think these players are really starting to figure out how to play it. And a good game from a Gilgamesh feels uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, just ask the, the Leviathans after their set because Lazbra had a really good game on Gilgamesh, and boy, did it feel oppressive. You, you just be, you're just able to, to get involved really easily on this pick. <laughs> I think the, the big switch up to me, I saw a lot of it, even myself, like I, I always figured that maxing the one first was the call in the jungle to help yourself with that jungle clear. But I've seen a lot of the junglers start to go into maxing the two these days and getting that drop kick up and right. just making sure that that's dealing maximum damage because all of your successful ganks play the same way. It's that you're going to get a really fat drop kick into a wall and be able to get the kill off of that. So I like that adjustment that, that these junglers have made. Well, sure helped early on for Kivo Fred with first blood in this game. Polar Bear Mike kind of faking a back here and said he blinks back in, finds a stun onto Neuma who drops the ultimate, but Sam Soccer's here and so is Panda Cat as the ultimate gets him in range. PBM though executed by Darted with that new wall ultimate. It's ultimately a two for one trade, oh! but it's a big pullback in from Sam. What a play from Sam. He thought, the Cubo Fred thought that he was springing the trap, but it was the other way around. And this is the problem for the Oni Warriors. Look at the ward coverage, or should I say the lack thereof, on this left-hand side. No wards past mid lane on the left-hand side for the Oni Warriors. And so they don't know that Sam's on the way. They don't have that sort of information. Fred's rotation is spotted the entire time. And that lack of ward coverage really came back to bite him at that point. Just a great bait by Panda Cat and PBM. I mean, yep. always so confident in their 2v2 and, and for good reason. And now, you know, Vote doesn't get doesn't get punished early. He saves Neil, feeling good. You know, we survived the first gank. We survived the early laning phase against Ymir Danza. 
it just takes one. It just takes right. one of these plays to go really well to all of a sudden feel like you might be out of it in this lane and vote might be out of it in this lane for the foreseeable future. Yep, two levels up now for Panda Cat. 101, but the two levels, definitely the important part. Hasn't started stacking that transcendence yet. You don't imagine it's going to be a massive issue once he's able to go back, finish it up, and get on back into that lane. What's the, What are the thoughts here on this Nuwa into the Tiamat matchup? Maybe not even the matchup in general, but just Nuwa because it's been kind of a fringe pick here and there. We've seen her a couple of times. Obviously, yep. the ultimate played... A nice roll there for Darda is able to grab the uh, the final bit of damage with uh, with the new uh, ultimate on the end of that fight. But haven't seen all that much of her. Don't have a lot of uh, of data on new uh, just yet here in season eight. No, I mean I'm a I'm a pretty notorious new uh, apologist. I think she's better than, than a lot of people do, but got to talk about it in a bit. Polar Bear Mike first through, but Sam for soccer. Fills up that space. It's Cubo Fred pulled back in and brutalized down. Sam for soccer finds the opening kill, but he is low and Darda is. Used the ultimate already, so he won't find the execute there. Hurry when finds the blast of damage into Neoma on the J Dragons. We'll find two more. Mike on this Ymir pick has just been too good, man. I mean, he just continues to look phenomenal on this selection. It was game five against the Titans last night where he just really took over on this pick. And again, it's a great wall. Freeze gets the beads from Fred, and Sam is right on time with that Ragnarok. Even though Sam fell for first blood and, and that first gank didn't go well, you know, I was talking about how much I liked his proactivity. It continues to be active on this pick, and, and that's the way I think you should be playing it. Panda Cat dueling out with Woo! Vote here, feeling comfortable. Does not have his ultimate, so Vote likely safe for the time being, but you might not be able to say the same for Panda Cat as Kubo Fred and Neilma both made their way over here, just defending the purple buff down, but Sam for soccer, Hurry Wind. Rotate on in. Outside of Dardes, everyone but the solo laners here for this purple buff. And Numa will attempt to steal it away, but looks like it will get secured by the Dragons. And look, the Dragons are three-way splitting this, so it's not like a huge win for them. But look at this all in from Hurry. Oh, Hurry win jumps underneath the Tier 1 tower, and he's got the damage. Down goes Dardes in the 1v1. Sam for soccer here to help heal out for his mid laner. And he'll do oh! a little bit more. Oh, but it's a massive drop kick from Cubo Fred. At least trades out one. Needed to do that, though, as Polar Bear Mike ultimately sent him to the grave. I mean, Hurry did use the beads when he probably didn't need to, but now we got to check in with Panda Cat as he's trying to take a 2v2v1. Two two oh, the ultimate blocked out, though, by Neilva and Vote will find the last chunk of damage there and return another kill. So the only Warriors continually clawing themselves to find some value across the map in some of these skirmishes. All the trends going in the wrong direction if you're the only Warriors, but you're at least finding something. Yeah, two for two overall across the map. You lose Fred in, in, and Dardes in the mid lane, but you get Sam and Panda Cat, and you get a bunch of beads, both Heroin and Panda Cat now without them for about two minutes. So that, there is a decent window now for the Warriors, and they've stopped the bleeding for Vote on this left-hand side. Yep. If Panda, you know, obviously it ends up being a mistake that he sticks around in that 2v1, but at the end of the day, I, I, don't, I don't really hate it. For him because if he wins that 2v1, gets a kill and gets out or gets two kills, the game's over. Yeah, I right. mean, that, that's just such a back-breaking play. And sometimes you got to you gotta risk the money in order to try and win in that point. Certainly, you know, the safe play in that position lets you keep your lead over there, lets you keep vote behind. But Panda went for the knockout punch and got uppercut it. And sometimes that happens. Right, you're either winning the game or at worst vote gets back to just one level behind instead of what was two previously. J Dragons will make a play towards the Greater Scorpion here. Warriors a couple of times in game one, slow on the response to some of these objectives. Greater Scorpion, definitely not worth walking in and dying over. And Dardes gets pulled in by Sam for soccer here. And of course, there's plenty of damage to get that one. Been a tough game. After that initial kill from Dardes, finds a couple of deaths oh. on the back end. Vote taunted back in. We'll have to dash his way away, but Sam for Soccer's there on the fall go up. It Fred's up and over the wall, but too little, too late for the Gilgamesh this time around. Two easy kills for the Jade Dragons. And Vote doesn't even remember what a purple buff feels like around his nope. waist at this point. He hasn't had one in that long. Perfect rotation over from Fine. Picks up the farm at mid. There and close in case the fight started to go the Oni Warriors way. But right now, after a Gold Fury, the J Dragons have wrested control back in their favor heavily. And this is a 5K gold lead. What was in, you know, 18, 19, 20 minutes maybe in game number one, a lot quicker here in game number two. The Oni Warriors not able to stabilize, stem the bleeding a bit 
as they had in game number one. So th this is maybe the most threatening territory where you can find yourself against this Jade Dragons team where there's still a lot of scaling and aggression to be done, plenty of items left to be completed, plenty of XP still to be farmed up on the map. You, you got a long road ahead of you here if you're the only Warriors to get back in this game. Exactly. The, the good news is that their team fight is really good between yep. Gilgamesh and Kukulin and Terra. They've got really good tools, and I don't mind the, the combination of Nuwa and Chiron together as a team fight pairing because Nuwa can help shred the tanks, which is typically somewhat of a weakness for Chiron that he doesn't kill tanks particularly well, but the long-range damage is really hard to peel away. I mean, Chiron alt shots, you're not peeling those. If he just lands a couple and do a masterful shot, that puts pressure on the enemy Aegis, which means Nuwa ult's going to be good. You can do it the other way around. If their Aegis is down, there's a decent chance that you can kill someone like a Tiamat or a Danzaburo without them being able to participate in the team fight or stepping out of position at all, but just because you have unpeelable long-range damage coming in on top of it. So I, I like the, the backline pairing alongside with the front line here for the Oni Warriors, but right now they're too far behind for it to matter. If they can close this gap or even maintain this deficit, if they, in 10 minutes they're still down 5k, they're fine because I think their team fight is that much better than what the J Dragons have. But if this lead balloons, if it continues to grow, then I don't think that their composition right. strengths will really get a chance to show. Yeah, J Dragons will like to push that Ooh, lead. Ooh, a purple. A purple buff for a vote for one of the first times here this game. Unfortunately, the XP that I had said stabilized a bit for vote has now gone in the opposite direction as Panda Cat finds himself top damage in the game near 15 minutes in. Not used to seeing the solo laners this far down, granted, between Kulkullen and Osiris. Probably more focused on farming themselves up, not getting that involved in the damage dealing. And, and look, I mean, Chiron's really good, he, especially towards the end of phase one and, you know, the, the first round, the group stages and all that kind of stuff. Like, he was popping off. He was winning just about every game. But I think the Dragons have, have really figured out this counter matchup and the way they want to play against it. Maybe something like this. A walk in, yeah. a freeze on to vote, but vote dashes right on through, but it's right into the waiting arms of Sam for Soccer. Panda Cat channels the ultimate, returns back to the Tier 1 tower, and the J Dragons are going to expand on that lead. And look, at this point, it doesn't really matter what god you are, that you're this far behind, but the J Dragons did it all yesterday up against the Titans. Every time the Titans picked Chiron, they were able. They just picked an aggressive jungler and an aggressive support in Danza Burrow, and they sat on Cyclone's lane. And I'm just very surprised that the Oni Warriors keep going, yeah, give me Chiron, where the Jade Dragons are going aggressive jungler, aggressive support, picking Danza Burrow, and sitting in the lane. It, it's not, it, it shouldn't be a surprise to them what is going on in these games. The, if you want to pick the Chiron, if you think he's that much better than every other hunter, fine. But you've got to either come with a better plan centered around the Danza Burrow, which is hard to do, or you've got to ban it. Yep, Danza Burrow has not had an answer to it yet. Vote's getting the absolute treatment here this game. It's a brutalize. Aegis gets used, but then a Ragnarok and Panda Cat. Now 2 1 and 4, four levels over Vote on this Chiron. Not, again, it's not necessarily even the fault of Vote. I just feel like this has happened to the Oni Warriors a few times where teams just kind of select Vote as the guy that game. And yeah. Sit on the duo lane, and well, Vote just doesn't get to participate. And that's what I mean. That's why it's so surprising to me that the Oni Warriors are picking and banning this way, because not only are you completely correct in that, but the Jade Dragons have been the most likely team to sit in duo lane. Right. And especially when you're picking Chiron and leaving open Danza Burrow, this is just what they've done. And, and the Jade Dragons have looked one-dimensional almost in doing it because it just keeps working. Right. I'm sure they've got something else, but why do they have to show it if every game the enemy hunter is like, give me Chiron, and Danza Burrow's open? Yep. I don't know, man. I don't, I, it, just, it just shocks me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Good wall from PBM here, and then the follow-up stun onto Neoma. The CC being chained well, but Neil will dash away to survive a little bit longer. Jay Dragon's called for a sub-20-minute fire giant. In game number one, this lead is looking a little bit better for the Dragons in game two, so you can't, I don't think, would uh, would have a hard time imagining that FG maybe starts to get called on here at some point. Though, in the back of your head, Agro, you're still maybe a little bit worried about that team fight. If the Oni Warriors can, can group up, they can maybe contest, but they're so far behind. Yeah. And, and you made that point earlier, that at some point the gold differential uh, makes up for maybe a, a slight lack in team fight ability. Exactly. And it's, uh, I don't even think the J Dragons are lacking in no. the team fight. It's that the other one is so much, is so good. <laughs> but, I mean, at this point, we're, we're talking about the Oni Warriors thinking about how they 
bit pick and ban for game three because you are just in such dire straits. You're, I, I like the idea to have Fred and it just left side jungle try and invade some stuff. Vote gets to push up all the way to tier one. This, this, I think the Warriors are doing the right thing from this position. You just have to spread out and hope the Jade Dragons get a little kill hungry and decide that they want to play yep. with their food a little bit. They got to roll the bones on either a FG Steel, a Phoenix defense, Titan defense, something. This is going to have to be attempted here from the Oni Warriors. This is going to be a tough one, though, as the Jade Dragons start up the Fire Giant here. Neoma looking towards it, walking his way in. But with the speed that the Dragons are doing this, looks like the Oni Warriors won't get much of a chance. And Fire Giant number one goes to the Dragons in 18 and a half minutes. And this is where they just get to do whatever they please on the map. And, and like I said, the Warriors should not be contesting. You should be spreading out, getting your farm, trying to just get some itemization and hope that you're going to be able to get to a point where you can actually deal some damage to some member of the J Dragons. But I mean, Mike is four levels up on Neil and the same level as Boat, only a level behind Dardes and, and Fred. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, he, he's going to be able to tank for, for an insane amount of time on this Ymir and put out pretty pretty good damage alongside it. You think that FG would have been a great time to say as God is my witness that FG no. is broken in half? No, it didn't <laughs> break. There was no drama to it, Dave. There was no drama. No, nothing. It would have injected life into <laughs> yeah. this game. The, that the is, spirit uh, of the WWE would have flowed through game number two Look, here. I'm a big lover of the way over hype yeah, right. something super yeah. mundane. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lover of that bit. But, uh, but you know, I think you would have caught even me off guard with that one. <laughs> That's the dream, right? I that's suppose so, yeah. No, that's too good a line, I think, to, to just throw out willy-nilly on a bit like that. It's got to it's gotta have some staying power. People, Who's yeah. willy? No, it's nilly that you need to be concerned about. Oh, okay. Yeah, the I know nilly. Yeah, Nil Nilly's a troublemaker, right. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Willie's the good one. Nilly, I don't know. He is, stay away from nilly on the other side. But J-Dragons are staying away from any of the Oni Warriors. Really, the other way around. The Oni Warriors are staying away from any of the J-Dragons here. Phoenix is being looked at now. You feel like this is kind of one fight and done sort of territory for the Jade Dragons. 20 minutes in, uh, one big sweeping team fight. Because the Oni Warriors have done a good job of staying kind of separate over the last few minutes where you're not giving up these full-on deicides, but you're going to have to at some point group up and try to deal with the Dragons. I mean, the, the wave clear for the Warriors isn't horrible. Nuwa Fog is, is pretty annoying to deal with on the Siege because it's going to chunk you out and chunk the wave a little bit. And Chiron has some pretty decent wave clear from not the greatest of distances, but enough in order to, to make it a little annoying to siege these Phoenixes. But the Dragons can just walk in. Oh, it's a blink on through from Nika and a good engage followed up by Numa. Panacat's health bar low. That'd be the perfect first target for the only Warriors to pick I up. And it's Nika who's got it. Panacat takes one to the grave with him, though. His final gate dashes into the back line. The only Warriors. Push back, they get one, they lose Cubo Fred in the meantime, but looking a bit healthier. Hey, that is an, a massive win from the Oni Warriors because you just got the, the Fed ADC on the other side that has Intrigue. Fire Giant. Here we go. They're starting to put up that defense, but the Jade Dragons not deterred, surprisingly enough. They know that no beads on vote, no ultimate on vote, and no ults at all on the other side means that this could still be a one fight. Both carries for the Oni Warriors down one very important vote are the Jade Dragons. Polar Bear Mike walks on in, finds the wall on Anika, but not enough range damage to follow up for anything serious. Sam for soccer goes in with her. He went, where did Dardes go? I missed it. Numa stunned in the back, and look at the target selection from the Jade Dragons. Down a Hunter, doesn't matter. Double kill for Sam for soccer. Hurry wind. We'll get Numa as well, and you got to go back and collect the Phoenix. Man, I love the way Hurry played that fight. He's in there on the dive with the rest of the assassins in the, in the, in the back line dive with the Osiris and the Ymir playing that team at the way it should be. Tardes didn't even have time to use beads or Aegis there as the Jade Dragons delete the health bar quicker than I could call it. Cubo Fred back and respawn. 15 seconds on Neoma, 18 seconds on both. The only Warriors just need to buy some time. Nika at least doing that as Cubo Fred leaps in but then leaps out to the Jade Dragons. Call for mid Phoenix and that's it. Panda took a long hike for a whole lot of nothing because the fighting's over at least for the time being. Ten seconds left on Fire Giant means these siege opportunities are done for the Jade Dragons. And they got one Phoenix. Really, the Warriors should consider that a win because they didn't die and they didn't lose the game in that position because they were certainly in danger of it. But from this position, you got to be looking for basically the exact same thing we just saw. Coordinated dive onto Panda Cat. And that's what I was talking about in game one. You get on top of this Danza Burrow, 
yeah, he's got all these tools to, to hit you from a distance and to make it difficult to lock him down. But come late game, if you just throw enough bodies at him, he's not going to be able to use that ultimate. Panda died without using it in that last fight because he knows it's just going to get body blocked and right. not, not, not do a whole lot of anything. Here's the good news for okay. the any warriors. You are, you are full on, and in, in now you're just gaining ground in the XP department. That's Everyone. True. Except for PBM on the J Dragons has reached level 20. So, so you are just gaining territory in that area. 18 for Kuvo and Darda, 17 for Vote. Neomod's got a bit more of a hike up XP Mountain to, to catch up to where PBM and the rest of the J Dragons are. Unfortunately for the Oni Warriors, Dragons still completing those final items. So it's going to take a little while for gold to matter less for the Dragons and still matter for the Oni Warriors. Now, this is a big heat check, I think, for the Oni Warriors. Fire Giant is going to be respawning here, second of the game, 24 minutes in. Still wild to say that, but that's how the J Dragons like to play. But the Oni Warriors want nothing to do with it, and the Dragons will get this one for free. And with God as my witness, this Fire Giant goes down without any sort of contest at Thank all. Thank God you didn't say broken in half, because then I Why couldn't would I say have that? said it. No, of course not. I wouldn't have said that at all. I don't know. I just decided to go with that phrase. Just yeah, fair kinda, enough. Just kind of came to me out of nowhere, I suppose. <laughs> Look, I mean, the Warriors, again... They You're just, your own inspiration. No, no, <laughs> no doubt about that. We, we've been knowing that one. Warriors just got to try and do the same thing. Get on top of Panda Cat. But I don't know how they answer the subsequent redive from the Jade Dragons because it is going to take everything in the tank for the Warriors to get those kills. But we see the long-range damage coming together between Vote and Dardes, along with that coordinated dive from Neil and the rest. I think Vote just sold his star item in order to finish off this Titan Spain. So a bit of a power spike for the Chiron. In the back line is Panicat. It's another follow-up dive, but this time there's plenty of peel to keep the Jade Dragons Hunter alive. Final K is doing a little bit better, though, on the other side of the fight. Dardes down low. Neuma is as well. Dardes is going to get chased by Hurry when Neil will make it into the fountain. But this fight is all but separated, all but over. Jade Dragons still have five, and the only Warriors Titan will crumble shortly. Love that adjustment from the Dragons. Instead of Hurrowin trying to sit back and peel, he, he's just like, hey, Mike, that's your job. That's your dual lane partner. You can handle that. I'm just going to get in there and get my hands dirty with the rest of them. 5-0-8 for Hurrowind on the Tia mat, and he made it look real good. Sam for soccer at 7-2-8 here in this game. So feels good for the Jade Dragons. Now, that's what I was talking about going in to, to game number two here, where I'm thinking, all right, the only Warriors, it, it's a fast game in game one. It's 24 minutes, but, but there are at least moments where the Oni Warriors are putting up a fight, showing sure. up against the Dragons. This one is, is the opposite. Now you're down 0-2. In the most recent game you've played, you kind of get blown out of the water. But you've activated your Neil Ma passive. You're, oh, that's your right. backs against the wall. That's where Neil thrives. We know it. You know, he, he's that clutch player. It, all, in all honesty, here's the deal. If they pick Chiron and they leave Danzibaro <laughs> open, Dave is solo casting because I won't need to be here. Oh, perfect. And we all want to hear that, right? That's what everyone Yeah, all of us. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to hear that. Let me, let me quick thoughts before yeah. break. What are your thoughts that Paul is the real main character, not mm. Neo, and it's really the Paul passive and not the Neo passive? See, I would think that, yeah. but the only Warriors got a buy in mm. this Phase 1 playoffs when they did nothing good during the regular season. <laughs> that makes me think it might be Neo, man. I don't know. Zap's out as well because it was Zap, Paul, and Neil are the guys. That's right. You know, and Ronnie's out as well. So Neil's really the only one left standing. I think he's got to be the main character. Yeah, it's time to, uh, to, to activate the passive here for Neil. They need to win three straight against the Jade Dragons. Not an easy task. We'll see if they can get it started, though, after this break.
Welcome back, everyone, to the SBL playoffs powered by Alienwares. The Dragons now lead the Warriors 2-0 as the casters had said at the end of the last one. If it's time to activate the Neil Ma passive, it's time to do it now. If you want to activate the Neil Ma passive, I don't know how you can do that. You're not Neil Ma. I'm sorry. But you can get very close by playing really well. To play really well, you have to have good tracking. To have good tracking, you need a good mouse pad. See, it all follows. You can get one right now. Shop.SmiteProLeague.com. Go ahead and get that one. And I guess play God. That's also what it says. But realistically, just go buy one. They're only available for a limited amount of time, so they will disappear if you don't act fast enough. In fact, by that I mean today or tomorrow. Otherwise, they're gonzo bonzo, and you're going to have to figure out something else to do for a mouse pad. Otherwise, it's uh, looking the same way for the Warriors right now. They have to turn the set around, or else they're going to be knocked out and be gone, and that's where things get a little rough for them. A three in a row reverse sweep is not unheard of, but very difficult. Bit of a doozy here for the Oni Warriors, though, in games one and two. And for what it's worth, Gore, this has also just been the kind of execution that we were talking about on the desk prior to jumping into game number two. I just don't understand the drafting selection choices from the Oni Warriors. They are really just alley-ooping themselves as snacks to the Jade Dragons. Pandacad just gets to sit back and kick his feet up and have a good time, just follow up when he needs to, because this has really been all about Polar Bear Mike and Sam for soccer to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, PBM, we saw this Emir yesterday, saw it again today, looked very, very solid. But this, you know, Sam pickup on the Fenrir really guided them through the the early game to the point where everybody else was able to just do whatever they wanted. I mean, Panda eventually, like, mid-game, kind of mid-late, was able to start picking up a lot of kills. And then Hurrowin just picked up the slack at the very end. Like, the, the two backliners had almost nothing to worry about here. Hurrywin didn't even really have to do anything either. That's the thing. That's that's the severity level that we are dealing with here from the potency of these yeah, Jade Dragons die. compositions. And Gore, it, it, it really does just strike me as odd because Oni Warriors are clearly placing so much priority into taking that Chiron early on. I think that it's already been made pretty pretty evident from Pandacats and, and from the Jade Dragons as a whole that they don't really care whether Pandacat yeah. gets Chiron or not. And it's not about leaving the, the Danzaburu open and, and taking that Chiron because that matchup could go really either direction. For me, it's the fact that they keep allowing the Jade Dragons to get this Fenrir selection choice so early on and they're not looking to make any sort of real adjustments because Fenrir eats Chiron yeah. alive with that Brutalize. Amir eats Chiron alive with his walls in CC. It's just terrible matchups for Vote to try and deal with. And it really doesn't come as any surprise to me that he would fall as far as four levels plus behind because what more is the man really meant to do when he's being drafted into such heavy counterpicks? It's starting to make me think that last week when they were banning Fenrir every single game, the Dragons were banning it so they didn't showcase that they had it as opposed to trying to take it away from the Warriors because it's been looking good for them. Warriors once again the first pick here, but... There's a, there's a lot to ban, Taco. I mean, they, they what, Yanis, Mercury, they banned the soul while Tiamat got through. Oh, well, you got to ban that. Well, then there's Danza Burrow, maybe, but you said maybe not. Finrear's on that list. Like, there's so much that it feels like you have to try and lock down. If they're going to keep putting so much preference into that Chiron pick, they have to get rid of the Fenrir, or they have the first pick selected. One or the other needs to come into effect here, Gore, because the Fenrir problem isn't even necessarily that Sam was playing it in game two or that PBM was playing in game one. That's the issue at its core is the fact that there are three different members on this Jade Dragons roster. And when the Jade Dragons have Fenrir as such an early selection choice, they can assume that Chiron's probably going to remain as a priority pick for the Oni Warriors. But more importantly, Gore, they just get to see where that Fenrir lock-in would actually suit best for the, whether it's jungle, support, solo, all of that can be determined as they watch this Oni Dragons composition transpire. So I think that Oni Warriors finally making the adjustment that I think needed to go down in game two because now they're trying to battle against momentum. And like you said, being able to, to take care of that one at least limits all of the, the issues you had listed, but is it going to be enough to help them turn things around? Dig your heels in, push back as hard as you can. Gilgamesh's band seems like it should be a toss-up for a Tiamat. 
The Warriors are hesitating a lot longer than I would have thought to, to pick their first pick. I mean, Chiron's been where they've been going. Kakullin, King Arthur available, and he hasn't necessarily been as prominent. Was banned in game one, but not even looked at there in game two. Do you go to that avenue? I guess they're even willing to lock in the Ymir. I was actually going to suggest either an Ymir or Fafnir lock in here for Neil Maul. Get Neil on a pick that he can actually be aggressive with and not be so freely punished on. I think that was one of the issues that he struggled with on that Terra. And again, it was something that we addressed on the desk. I had some very steep concerns about how useful some of that Terra mobility and CC would actually be up against the likes of an Ymir. But... Neil now having the, the option to, to lean into this frontliner, I think does make it a little bit more difficult for the J Dragons to opt for picks such as the oh Nemesis God, for Sam child. or, well, Tiamat still an option here for the for the J Dragons. And I do like this choice. It, it's just safe, but the Fafnir is what I was expecting to go. It, it was one or the other between Oni Warriors and Jade Dragons. Mm -hmm. Had a feeling both of these gods were going to be coming into play, though. And both of them getting locked in pretty quickly there. Swiftly again, 5-0 and 8, I believe it was, for Hurrowind on this. Undying part of 13 kills. Pretty hard to argue against locking it in twice in a row, especially because if you don't lock it in here, Warriors are probably going to scoop that up for themselves. Now they have to make the decision how to deal with this. Fafnir has been a little problematic for a lot of these teams in trying to deal with it, the burn that he brings. So they're going to lock in King Arthur, which is making that top two look pretty solid for the Warriors. Chiron as well, although it is worth noting, as you had said, he hasn't necessarily had the best time on this Chiron so far. No, but Panicat could either go the Densburu again, or he could even look to maybe flex into that Hu Yi option just because the kind of restrictions that an Amir wall forces against the Dens Boru. Having that leaf escape form yeah. is more of a dash, not actually a hard leap over the wall. Could apply too much pressure onto the front line for the J Dragons to try and protect. And it seems as though Panicat's even willing to withhold his pick for the time being. I like this choice from the J Dragons to just immediately lock in the most aggressive direct matchup they could find for that solo lane just to further ensure that Fine OK doesn't ever really lose control of the lane. I'm really liking this. I'm going to try to will something into existence. It'll never happen. Izanami hasn't been played so far. <laughs> I don't think something she'll that be she has. Like, she can get under the wall. That technically happens. That works technically. I'm just, I'm just trying to get something new maybe out there. There's a lot of options, I think, is the best way to say it for Panda Cat to jump into that could be. I would argue just more than happy and probably more than successful here. The Dragons are trying to limit potentially the front line. Last time it was the Morgan Fafnir. Prior to that, what was it they banned? R uh, Raijin was up there on there. Raven as well has been taking a lot of bans for them. So it seems like that's going to be their option here. The Raven and the Nemesis taken away. Even if the J Dragons were contemplating locking in that Nemesis for Sam, Oni Warriors aren't going to take any sort of chances here. And one more time, Huyi on her. Both gods with uh, available leaps <laughs> that I think play very well into the, the AoE presence that we see from the J-Dragons off of this Fafnir and Kakolin. And I, I just also think that the CC immunity on, on her is appealing, but Pele is a really interesting choice here for, for Sam because... She's really aggressive. She can have a, a heck of an impact in the early game, Gore, but if you're not able to actually establish any sort of map pressure outright, Pain Lane does not feel all that great into an Amir. Yeah, definitely going to be maybe a little bit of a struggle over there, depending on that matchup. But Pele even banned out last game by the Warriors, something we've seen, I think, only Sam. Maybe I have to double-check that one as to everybody who's been picking her up, but since that shell nerf has been coming through, she's been picked up a little more often and so far been pretty prominent. Daji and Agni going to be coming through on the other side. Agni, it's kind of been the, the I want to say, whispers of talk, like he has been someone that has been picked up, Still just does the damn mage thing, but that's about all he has. Heimdall even locked in on the other side. It feels like, I mean, Dodgy Agni doesn't necessarily close it out weakly for the Warriors, but doesn't necessarily close it out strongly either. This is an interesting pickup because J-Dragons, I don't know how keen they are on Pandacat with his high dollar performances in the past, but <laughs> there's always a chance for, for a redemption saga here for, for Pandacat, I think, on this Heim. And I do like the fact that the Bifrost will provide him with a decent amount of survivability against that Daji, just in case Cubo's looking to try and establish some early dual lane presence. But the Agni is 
again, just one of those more risk first reward factors because yes, Agni does bring a lot of AOE presence throughout those objective engagements, but on that same note, it's very easy for a Pele to kind of chase him down. So a lot of this is really going to come down to how well Neil Maul is actually going to be able to utilize some of those Amir walls to maybe try and cut off some of the J-Dragon's aggression. Almost every conversation that we've had circles back to exactly one place, and it is all on Neil Ma. That, I have to admit, is a little stressful if I were it's him. Like There's a lot of pressure for just the Ymir to perform. Granted, we've seen it do really well, but with Heimdall, with Pele, Cullen, Fafnir, Tiamat on the other side, there's a lot of work cut out for him, and not a lot of ease in the process, but this is the moment. I mean, Taco, it is it is do or die for the Warriors. You lose here, you're completely out. You get a small consolation prize here in the like kind of third to fourth area, but really you want to go towards the finals where a lot of that cash prize for the playoff is going to be waiting for you. Can they start a comeback here? There's always a chance, Gore. <laughs> I, I will never rule out Neil Maw plot armor because it might just be one of the most powerful forces in the entire Smite universe. But with that being said, I don't think that Oni Warriors are, are making this as easy as they could for themselves because this is a bit of a shaky early game for the Oni Warriors. And if they're not able to hold their own mm -hmm. throughout those direct laning phases, we've already seen Sam try to get super aggressive with Tardes at level two even. I would more or less expect some of that similar Fender gameplay to be taking effect here with the Pele now. And it's just going to be a, an interesting ride, I think, for, for Dardes and Kubo on the Daji and how well they're actually going to be able to fare against that core of the Fafnir, Colin, and Pele. I'll be honest with you. There's an Oni Warriors logo over there, like on one of the other monitors, that is kind of mean mugging me, and it makes me feel like I'm supposed to start rooting for them, or else it's going to pop out. So I'm starting to think that maybe they have more than just a chance. Although I will say, when you ask, "Hey, can they turn it around here?" having the it's a like there's a good chance for it does not leave me as hopeful as I'm sure a lot of Warriors fans out there would want. But they have been looking good. They were down in their last set against the Dragons and were able to turn around there. Granted, best of fives, there's a lot more games that they have to be able to win here, but this is the moment for them. If the Dragons win, they go to face the Bolts tomorrow in the finals. The Warriors need to win to stay in. That's the name of the game for them, and that's where all the weight is, Taco. If Do you think this is a 3-0? Are the Dragons going to be able to do it? If it was any other team, I would say there's a high likelihood Oni Warriors bounce back, but this is looking like a J-Dragons 3-0. Well, that's not what you want to hear if you're a Warriors fan. Hopefully we'll be wrong, but we'll have to see in game number three if the Dragons will move forward. Well, that's got to be a complete turnaround for the Oni Warriors here in game number three. And the good news is, Agro, who's still with me, and of course Doug still with us for game number three, the good news is... It won't be Panic Out on the Donzaburo this game. It'll be a, it'll be a Heimdall. True. So at least one thing that has been a thorn in your side this entire set will be a little bit different here. Maybe it gives you a chance. Yeah, and the J-Dragons had the opportunity to go to the dance, yep. and they decide not to. And I, and I have to believe it's because of this Ymir first pick. So you did it, Oni Warriors. You came up with a plan in order to keep Danzaburo out of Panda's hands. But what did it cost you? Everything. No. Everything. No, that's because, goes, yeah. yeah, because Hurry gets Tiamat. You had to first pick Ymir <laughs> over going Tiamat for Dardes. And in some people's mind, that might be the same as costing you everything. It, it's just a really difficult position. Because of the way that the, the, the Jade Dragons have played on so many different gods, I mean, the, when we talk about how much being a specialist at characters opens up your picks and bands, look no further than this set. Because Sam's looked unstoppable on Mercury. So that feels like a must ban. Of course, Hero wins Giannis. So now all of a sudden you're just down two bans and you're left in a position where you can't ban yep. the Danzaburo. So it ends up making you make some pretty rough adjustments in the midst of your picks and bans. But you know what? I I'm kind of okay with it because the Dragons have shown that their primary win condition is playing around Panda getting super far ahead in duo. At the very least, you're making them beat you with something a little bit different. Even though I think their draft is really good this game, they're, you're making them do something at least yep. a little bit different, and that's at least an adjustment. Yeah, make them shift their weight a little bit and see how the J-Dragons reply. It's going to be tough, though, to uh, to match some early game pressure, especially once Sam for soccer on this Pele starts to get the ball rolling a little bit. You talk about specialist picks. Seems like Sam on, on the Mercury, which has been consistently banned out by the Oni Warriors here this set, uh, this Pele as well, somewhat in that category. 
uh, of maybe a specialist pick here for Sam for soccer. Yeah, it's kind of weird how Sam seems to have all these picks that only work for him, huh? I mean, it's like Pele and Mercury. Right? Kind of weird. Maybe he's good, but that <laughs> probably isn't No, it. couldn't be. No, I don't think that's See, it. See, headlight fluid. Ah, yeah, he's always topped up on that. Oh, Cubo Fred being looked at by Hurdy when here. The knockup is there. Sam for soccer blinks on through, but not enough damage on the end. And Cubo Fred survives. And this is a, a at-what-cost kind of scenario. The back camps end up getting taken away. Cubo Fred now off the map. Can't impact any lanes, at least for a few seconds. So not all is lost, but a, a sign that the Jade Dragon's not shying away from this early game. Mm, but I like to play from Dardez. Don't rotate. Just shove out that wave. Make sure that you're forcing Sam and Hurry to miss some minions and, and lose some gold as well to the tower. That's all that he can really do in that position. And that, that's why this Dodge G pick scares me a little bit in this match because the Warriors have not been able to stay close in the early stages. I mean, think back to their composition in game two. They had a really great team fighting comp and they just never got a chance to, to use it. Kind of the same here in this game. They've got a pretty good team fighting comp. They, right. they scale well in the late game. They've got a lot of tools. Once you get some farm on these characters, their early game doesn't really impress me very much though. And they haven't gotten out of the early game so far in this set. So I'm a little worried, I think, if I'm an Odie Warriors fan. It has been interesting watching kind of the ebbs and flows of the mid lane pick so far as well, where Dardes gets the raw in game one. Some of the snipes found some impact. Relatively quiet on the new one in game two. The ultimates found some damage. I believe one kill is what we saw Dardes pull with one of the new one ultimates. And then another kind of niche pick. In the Agni here in game three, again, backs against the wall. You gotta win this one, and you're going out of the phase one playoffs. You get a buy into the second round, then you go three and out. Sh can't feel good for the Oni Warriors, but in a moment like that, they feel confident giving Dardes this Agni pick. I mean, that's how Dardes has been his whole career. He is willing to play things that no one else is, and more often than not, people start playing the stuff that Dardes is playing because he's setting metas in that mid lane. He has been that good historically on a bunch of different selections. Hera is the one that comes to mind for many of us. I'm sure you're thinking of Hera all the time, Dave. But Sorry, what? I was thinking about Hera. Exactly, you were. Oh, got it. That's a Dardes special. Right. And this is the PBM special. Walk nice on in plans. towards Neuma. But it's the ultimate connecting now as Panacat takes over to level Whoa. 5. Neuma will crash back down to Earth. Is there enough damage on the back end, though? Sprint gets charged now by Neuma, and that looks like it'll be enough to get him out of this one. The axe connects. The stun is there. <laughs> oh, no. Panda Cat toots his horn, and down goes Neuma. The thing, man, watching Panda play Heim, is, it's just it's just like watching Picasso write music. I mean, isn't it just incredible what he can do on this pick? He is so good on the Heim that he not many people are going to be able to weave that auto in, get Wait. the slow as well. What? <laughs> okay, sorry. It's like watching Mozart paint. All right, good. So you knew it was a bit. I just had to make sure you did because uh, the look in my eyes didn't say so. Vote gets taken down low by Sam for soccer. He won't have the damage at the end of the day to get himself back on the map. And the Pele on over to the duo lane. And hey, duo lane has a bit of a lead here for the J Dragons. Yeah, kind of weird how that keeps happening too. But on this right-hand side, Cubo's getting aggressive. Fine, okay. Back beneath his tier two tower. Down from the ultimate is Cubo Fred. The Daji trying to get away. Neoma, or Nika, excuse me, re-engaging on a fine, okay. On the other side, though, Hurry wins found the kill on a Cubo. And the Oni Warriors empty-handed at the end of it. The tier two tower dive, no good. Neoma nearly falls as well. The J Dragons controlling seemingly every side of this map. Man, when it rains, it pours. Dave, they're up 2,000 gold <laughs> in five minutes. What is going on? We thought it was supposed to be better this time for the Oni Warriors because they had dual lane control. They were playing well over there. And then Mike and Panda just are able to hit the Jets on this dual lane side. They win their 2v2 fight really well, then vote. Maybe gets a slight bit greedy, but it's just Sam continuing to put pressure on this duo lane. And I think that the Warriors in vote, that they just have to be ready for that. The, in a lot of games, you can go, oh, we haven't seen Sam in a while. But a lot of junglers wouldn't be over here in duo this early. You know, that's right. just like not where they would be. Again, you, I think that the Jade Dragons are, are playing to their strengths and they're playing to their trends. And they're not, the enemy teams are not adjusting to that as quickly as, as I think they might need to. Good news is, hasn't spiraled completely out of control just yet. It's these next few minutes, right, where yep. where you and I are, are, are discussing something completely different in the next 10 minutes, or, or, or we've suddenly got a game and then a set on our hands. If the only Warriors can stem this bleeding, 
th that's where the Jade Dragons really make their money. They get these early leads and they compound them on them time and time and time and time again. So now the Oni Warriors just need to, to kind of slow things down, stem the bleeding, keep themselves in this fight. I mean, look, the, the, the XP isn't completely out of control. Dual lane, you're still even in the levels department, you know, item-wise. Going to be a little lopsided as Panacat stacking up the uh, the Transcendence there. But things like this are never going to feel good. Cubo Fred having to use the ultimate. Beads used by Hurrywind to avoid the pull back in. But Cubo Fred drops back down to Earth. Will dash out to the rest of his team. It's a great freeze from Neilmon. Cubo Fred will survive. The Jade Dragons might look for a little bit more. But instead, they choose to back away. Nika's here early, but final kill oh, no. on the way final as kill. well. No. He's looking for Neil. And he's got the knock up there. And the damage follows up as well. There's a stun. Underneath the tier one tower, does Nika have Snipes? enough damage? Vote He's might. It's an ultimate there, and Nika will pick up the first kill of the game for the Warriors. Okay, they're doing something here. Nika is able to get here early, make an impact, and fine. Okay, sure, he goes in and gets the kill, but it's a level six Ymir for his level eight Kakullin. Certainly worthwhile there for the Oni Warriors. Oh, Nika might have some damage here. Hurrywind is able to dash away, sends a minion on in towards Nika. Panda Cat close by. Don't know where that crystal would have taken him, but not in range enough to get anything done on Tanika. So now the King Arthur starting to flex some of those muscles early on here into this game. Maybe that's where the Oni Warriors need to latch on to get Nika into a position to succeed. And that's exactly what they were trying to do earlier, and that's why I was, what I was going to say before that fight broke out, is that even though it doesn't go well, the dive on to Final K I think is the right idea for the Oni Warriors. You don't want to go to duo necessarily. You don't necessarily want to fight around mid, though I think you can now that Hurry's beads are down. Fighting around that right-hand side, maybe you can get Nika ahead and let him start to be the snowball effect for your team to drag you back into this game. Then it's just mixed, ex missed execution by the Warriors. But you think back to, to game two, I don't think they made a whole lot of proactive plays that just didn't work out. It just wasn't a whole lot of proactivity on their side. And I'm always going to give more credit when they try to make the right play and then it just doesn't work out in comparison to not making the play at right. all. Difficult team, the Jade Dragons, to out proactive when things like this are happening. PBM leaps on and misses the stun on Anilma. So the Emir is still feeling okay. Instead, actually turns around to freeze a little bit of damage on a PBM. Cubo Fred close by, choosing the time on that Daji to, to dash in. So, so important. What you, you hate doing is having to use the powwows defensively and then having to leap away. So I think a lot of weight on Cubo Fred here this game to keep pace with Sam for soccer, but already a two-level difference out of the jungle. Feeling good if you're the Jay Dragons. And honestly, Sam being two levels up and 1-0 and 1 is on the lower end of his Pele performances as of right. late. So if you're the Warriors, it's not all bad. Uh-oh, Sam for soccer blinks in, finds Vote. Vote will dash away, and then the wall from Neil Ma prevents the follow-up. It's a double stun on the back end, but Neil likely trading his life out here. The dash in from Panacat does not connect, and the last auto attack will not either. And the Oni Warriors will stay alive once again, buying themselves some time. And hey, you got you got an ultimate out from Panacat. You stopped the Jade Dragon from doing Gold Fury. Those are wins for the Oni Warriors and a really good wall coming from Neil. Sam, you know, was really itching to press that Volcanic Lightning and dive in on the vote, but not able to do so. Good patience from him and knowing what Neil's options are. But then for Neil to survive on the back end of that, shout outs to the Heavenly Agility. We don't see that picked up very often. Ended up being the difference. PBM transforms, opens up the door to this Gold Fury now. Being started on once again. Coerce goes down, but it's a turn and a burn on to Neuma, and down goes the Ymir. Sam for soccer, 201 on this Pele. A bit of a bait and switch there from the Jade Dragons. That, that man has a family, and they're nice. I've met them. They're cool. Yeah. Like, you don't have to do that to poor Neil. He walks up. Robin Ma is in my DMs talking about skiing and yeah. stuff. Dude, I love it. I, I, I love it too. <laughs> Wait, I want to go skiing with Robin Ma. What's that about? Right. All right, whatever, man. I guess we know who's. Robin's favorite caster is, and I thought it was me, but apparently it isn't. But that's just the Jade Dragons <laughs> continuing to take what the Oni Warriors give them. But, you know, I, on, at the, on the other side of the coin, I really don't mind Neil giving up the body in order to make sure that the Gold Fury doesn't go down for the Jade Dragons. It's certainly let, you know, bad for him individually right. that he stays off the map a little bit longer. He's now 0-3 and, and down two levels. But at the same time... It's not that global gold for the whole, for the entirety of the Jade Dragons, for them to spread out throughout the team and keep the snowball going. So it, it doesn't look good for Neil's sat line or, or individually, but I think it's the right play. That said, that gold and 
XP, as limited as it might be, still going to Sam for Soccer, who has the absolute ability to spiral this game out of out of control. Uh, with just a few presses of the button as these team fights end up going on. Pyromancer instead is where the Jade Dragons will go. So a little bit of extra gold weaving its way over towards the Jade Dragons. 4.7K is where we stand. 11 and some change minutes into this game. 3,500 in the XP department as well. So things haven't gotten horrific for the Oni Warriors, but they have gotten worse. He said they needed to stabilize, and that hasn't quite been the case. No, it's a sprint there for Neil. He doesn't have horrific emblem. But if you're talking about the Golden XP, I would describe that as horrific. Sorry, I was <laughs> still thinking about them. Picasso, the mm. world-renowned musical composer. artist. The right. composer, right. That's the word for <laughs> He's a composer. Musical artist. He's, <laughs> he's dropping pop hits. My man's got sunglasses and headphones yeah. on. He's, 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 what's, it, he's no Mr. Worldwide, really I'll tell you that much. What's the weird way of describing playing the piano? Tickling the ivory? That's what I... <laughs> Can you me. say that? <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to say that on cast. Eh? Tell me you've never heard that before. <laughs> I've never heard that once in my life. And maybe I'm mifflining here on cast by not knowing a commonly used term. No, not knowing term. twilighting is definitely yeah, worse. Yeah, that's than far worse. Whatever I just said that I'm too scared to repeat now even a second <laughs> time. I'm waiting for a Hindu man to come in here. Pull you off, yank you chair. off the cast. <laughs> right. If anyone's going to have like a, a shepherd's crook and yoink us off yeah. camera, it'd be Hindu man. So we'll, uh, we'll see if you hear some rustling in the headset in a few minutes. Then, uh, then maybe I'm not longer for, uh, for casting here. But... Gold Fury still on the map for the Jay Dragons. Oni Warrior showing some face here, but but it's still Sam for Soccer that you got to be wary of here. Where, where the Jay Dragons they'll start up this objective. You saw it last time on Tenille Ma, and how quickly they can turn and find that engagement. It's got to be a weird kind of knife edge type balance for the Warriors. You wanna you wanna show up and try to contest this Fury, but right. you realize that the Jay Dragons at the drop of a hat can. Turn. Yeah, I mean you just got to ask yourselves is. 5K at this Gold Fury, a better fight for us than down 8K at Fire or down 12K on Phoenix. Right. I think with their composition, I think I'd like to wait because I think they scale well enough that maybe they can make something happen down 8K at Fire. I, I just don't see a window for them to really win this fight. I mean, PBM being half health is a good start for them, though. It is, and maybe you throw Neomai in there once more, see if you can find a Miracle Steal, but... The only Warriors showing some face and some damage is enough to get PBM and the rest of the Jade Dragons pulled off this Gold Fury. So now it's the Jade Dragons almost electing to take things a little bit slower. There's definitely a world where the Dragons can fully commit on that and see how the Oni Warriors respond. But maybe not loving the circumstances and the Oni Warriors will keep themselves in the game just a bit longer. And the reason that I think the Dragons are playing patiently is because take a look at the itemization situation between the Warriors and the Dragons. The Warriors have just finished their, third, their, their second item. Just done with the Thebes for Neil. Just done with that Charon's coin for Dardes. Whereas Sam and Hurry, they're close to that third full item. Mm, good point. They can play it slow if the Oni Warriors show up here and come in with a much bigger power spike. Transformation from Mike seems like there's a little bit more in the mind of the Jade Dragons who will secure the Gold Fury. Panda Cat took a whole heap of damage on the back end there. Vote follows up with a long range confirm. PBM though taken low here. The rest of the J Dragons had left, but PBM still left in range and Vote will pick up a kill. In trading Mike for the Gold Fury, certainly worth it for the J Dragons. They don't have to play, play it slow and patiently if the Warriors are gonna give them that much space around the objective because they still have that Fafnir. Feels like the Warriors just, the, they're the faster response time than in game one. Remember how easy it was for the Dragons to get those objectives in their face in game one. This time, they're a little bit quicker on the uptake. Vote throws the Warriors' hat in the ring, but some good secure from the Dragons ends up paying off. So now the Oni Warriors, they would at least pick up one kill on the back end. You don't love that it's on to PBM, but still a kill is a, a kill is a kill, and that feels good for the Oni Warriors at this point in this game. But it, it's when the J Dragons elect to flip that switch, and then they say, all right, we're done kind of playing things slow here, and we really want to go, when the Oni Warriors are going to have to step up and step up big. Still a tier one tower standing here and left. Hello. And the cat dashes in, looks for the engage, loses half of his health in reply, and maybe the J Dragons rotating to left is a bit of why. Okay, that's the uh, that's the logo heat check right there from mm. from Panda Cat to see if he was just going to be able to try and style on him a little bit for the two v one. Loses the beads and the ultimate. That's going to put a pause on this red buff invade. Don't hate it, but. A little unnecessary, I think. You can just play that slowly, step up and try and bait some cooldowns maybe. You knew that Hurry and Sam were on the way, and you're trying to set up the dive onto you. They're, you're trying to make them go on you, but 
definitely didn't need to commit quite that hard. What do we think itemization-wise here from Hurry when got the breastplate of Valor after that Charon's coin earlier on? Maybe on a pick like this, where you, where you need to be aggressive in the face of the enemy team, a little extra defense allows you to do that more often. It, tef it definitely does, and I like it a lot for that exact reason. It just lets you be really aggressive, dive in, and dodgy can be problematic for you come late game as any backliner because she just gets so much damage. She has so much scaling on all of her abilities and on that passive that you don't really want to, to give yourself the option of getting one shot later on. Instead, you can just go with this breastplate build. The cooldown feels great on Tiamat as it stands. You really want to get to full CDR anyways, in my opinion, in order to have your Serpents deal and give enough threat to the map come late game. And you don't have to worry quite as much about this dive from Arthur, Dodgy, and right. the long-range damage from the Chiron, which can be really annoying as a mage. Well, okay, maybe there's some good news here for the Oni Warriors. The, the gold differential ha has stayed about the same since the Gold Fury w was confirmed. The, the, the graph has stabilized and actually like there's a kill it. onto Mike here, which uh, a tanky Fafnir will say no way. Pyromancer is going to change that thought immediately. A little more gold on over towards the Jade Dragons. But you earlier on referenced that maybe if this game is able to go on late enough, then the Oni Warriors are, are, are in a potentially better spot. If the, if the gold lead doesn't get totally out of hand, then maybe that's where the Oni Warriors are able to make some money in this game. XP is definitely not out of hand. Two levels at most in support and uh, over in the jungle there as well. So the Oni Warriors have kept themselves in contention here in Game 3. Much better than in Game 2. Remember in Game 2 I said if they can keep this 5k deficit for the next 10 minutes, then they're in an okay position. I think they were they had lost in the next 10 minutes. It's but right. in this one, it's been four to five minutes of just this 5K lead. And so that's good. They, they are definitely getting there. You're right to, to call that difference between game two and game three. And I think that you're good. You don't have to start getting, you know, cold feet. You don't have to start trying to show up to all these objectives and start trying to force things if you're the only warriors. I think right now doing exactly what they're doing, just defending their buffs is all they need. Maybe. Again, finding PBM, who will dodge out. Last bit of damage there from Dardes, who has Divine Ruin online for himself, the rest of his team. Good spreader of anti-heal. We'll keep these fights maybe a bit quicker. Be able to slow down the sustain that the Jade Dragons have brought to the table. Love the banter between Mike and Neil, by the way, uh, over yep. on Twitter. And I think in-game once or twice I've seen the two of them kind of jumping around with one another in lane. Uh, I think Mike means it, though, right? I mean, it's all yeah, serious. Yeah, he hates and, him. Right. He, it's, it's, it's pure mean and ang in anger, I think. From yeah. Me. Did you know that Mike started going to the gym and lifting because he, Neil kept beating him up in real life? Really? Yeah, that's true. Say it ain't so. Yeah. Neil, Neil packs a punch, man. I mean, you know, he does. he's he's a he's a fit guy, right? Um, and you know, Mike lifts all this heavy well, weight. Well, I've seen he's always Neil drive like six hundred yards, right? I mean, that's true, uh, and he, that's all torque, all torque. Yeah, he he, I don't know how he does it, man. I feel like my <laughs> spine would snap in yeah, half. Yeah, that the I'm way not kidding. Well, I am kidding about club. the six hundred yards. I'm not kidding about the fact that Neil. He hits rushes a golf ball. He really does. And if it lands in the fairway one out of 18 times, then he is stoked. And that is why. <laughs> Iron Gang. Yeah, right. Him him hitting it well is why he's my scramble partner. The one out of 18 times is not great because I'm zero out of 18. So one hole will beat you guys, but uh, not super often. Jay Dragons may be considering forcing the issue a bit here. As the Primal Fury started up down to half HP, but then reset Oni Warriors have showed up to this objective. All five members of both teams outside of Sanford Soccer, who's over there towards the mid lane, are here. But it looks like Jay Dragon's content with playing this one slow. And this is exactly the way the Warriors should be playing it. Well, let's not give it up for free. Let's see if the Dragons are going to make a mistake. But I don't want the Warriors to really feel like they have to all in commit. You don't lose the game for the Jay Dragons getting this Primal Fury and walking away zero kills on both ends. You could lose the game by contesting losing three yep. and them going to fire. So this is still a very advantageous fight for the Jade Dragons. The Warriors do not have to force a fight here. They can keep playing slow. Interested to see where Dardes positions himself because he does have some range damage, the ability to turn this fight. Nika has gone around the backside. It's a freeze on the who uses the bead. So now that big active is offline. Neil, he's been left alone. He's been stunned down. The health bar is gone and Panda Cat finds the kill. Now it's Cubo Fred into the powwow. Has one chain on a Sam for soccer who will walk on out away from this fight, but Cubo Fred walked at by fine. Okay, you said losing three might not feel good. Well, the only Warriors have lost two. And they lost two, and 
Does anyone on the Jade Dragons look pressed for it? What a stun from Mike up and over the wall, and Fine is right there oh, with him. Oh, and the dive is happening, and Darda is dashed on by Sam for soccer, and as God is my witness, he is broken in half as Darda is goes down, but it's a return kill from Nikub. Rest of the J Dragon surging on in. The King Arthur gets knocked up. A little bit of damage on the back end, but not enough for the kill. At least they get Sam, and the J Dragons are not going to be able to just waltz right on over to Fire Giant with their positioning all the way by the Phoenix, but certainly this Primal Fury is going to be a foregone conclusion for them. I just don't think the Warriors needed to start to push the issue at this point. I mean, they're going to lose a lot on the map in terms of XP and gold. This team fight recap says, you know, it's not too bad for the Warriors right away, but with all those respawn timers, with stripping away the jungle, the Jade Dragons are definitely going to expand the lead. Now it's up to 8,000 gold, where it was at five and a half, six K before that fight. You're just making the job harder when it comes to defending on these Phoenixes or defending on Fire Giant, wherever you want your, your last great defense to be. I just don't think the stakes are high enough on a Primal Fury right. to have that swing the course of the game. You lose percentage points by giving up that Primal Fury, definitely. But you lost far more percentage points by going for a low percentage play and trying to take that fight. And then also losing the Primal Fury on the end of it. And of course. Y you're considering maybe FG, something <laughs> worth contesting even a Phoenix later on with the, with the state of the game, the speed that the J Dragons can do some of these objectives. It was an okay flank around the, the end from Nika there, but but again, to your point, that kind of caused the Warriors to force the issue after Nika had found uh, had found that back line. Unsuccessful, though, in finding any kills. Now Pyromancer taken by the Jade Dragons, and you have to imagine Fire Giant on the menu here. You wonder if, if uh, the only Warriors, after what just happened at Primal, feeling dissuaded a bit from showing face around the FG. Yeah, 9,000 gold. It, I still think they're probably correct to try and get in here and contest this. Because Darda's steal. Book it now. Oh, all right. Book right, it. Write it down. Uh, it's written down in, okay. my, uh, in my brain. We'll see if it comes to fruition. Though, if the Dragons have it their way, they're just going to fight, win the fight, and then go back and deal with the FG afterwards and not even give Darda has that type of chance. P PBM has that upgraded frenzy. Usually that's the go button for this Dragons team on when they want to complete off this objective. Final K has maybe found the back line, but instead it's Neoma who's looked at first. He will survive for a minute. Sam for soccer gets the kill onto the Woo! Amir, and it's a <laughs> double on the boat. Yeah, see you later. Now Dardez is just free food for Final K. He's going to get that one, and it's a rout for the Jade Dragons, just not even close around this Fire Giant fight. And again, it just starts with Neil being a little bit too far forward and being an easy target for the Jade Dragons. They've given him a lot of respect in picks and bans during this set. I think it's pretty clear that he was the difference maker for the Oni Warriors in their set yesterday. Sorry. Thank you, Dave, for that, for uh, interrupting my point. And it's j in with, the, with this certain focus on the Neil Ma and the way that he's picking his gods and on the actual battlefield, I think they've really taken the wind out of the Oni Warriors' sails. Oh, it does feel that way. And all five members of the J Dragons still alive. All five members will have the FG buff here as well. Now it's a grouping and pushing for the J Dragons. Right hand side, tier two tower looks to be the target here. Decent death timers as well. 25 seconds on Nika, 15 on Cubo Fred. So you imagine this tier two tower goes quietly and then maybe a look towards the right side Phoenix. So you don't have the King Arthur immediately to buy any of that space. But we got uh, 1.8K at least gold huh. to spend up. So the Jade Dragons will happily go back and do that. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Mike doesn't go with some sort of damage here. He does end up going Compassion, surprisingly enough. But yeah, going towards the Magic Focus, that's where he's been going on this fast. They're going to go back and buy instead of uh, Chest and Try. Mm, yeah, smart call. Maybe I think it <laughs> probably should have been Leg Day for them here. but Yeah, maybe. I don't know, the lifting hasn't seemed that heavy for them, to be, <laughs> honest, to be honest with you. Yeah, the, the couch that I'm not kidding, I moved out of my apartment earlier on today, uh, was definitely heavier than what the Jade Dragons feel like they've had to lift so far in this set. This best of three hanging in the balance seems like a bit of an overstatement with the state of the game here in game number three. You're looking at a 14,000 gold differential. Two minutes, 45 seconds left on the, the Fire Giant as well. Still two tier two towers to go down. And the J Dragons on the verge of punching their tickets on into the finals. Only Warriors still have a chance to defend. Small chance, albeit, 
but a chance nonetheless. It's going to have to be a full five on five. You're going to have to do what you did in game two, find Panda Cat or Hurry Wind first, yeah. and hope that your back line can stay alive. Yeah, but it's so much easier for Panda to stay alive on the Heim in comparison to the Danza in the late game stage. Now, hopefully, uh, I'm interested if Gore will have a trademark Gore stat on he always what, does. what Sam's combined Pele KDA has been uh, during this phase, because he has looked unstoppable. Yeah, I, I imagine it's a pretty here good one here. It's an engage onto the back line, and it's Tardes who will use the Aegis, but it matters not. Just buys a little bit of time. Vote dashing back towards the fountain will use an Aegis of his own. Kivo Fred has found the back line, but he's also found the grave. The Jade Dragon sweeping through the Oni Warriors, and it's a matter of time before we see the Dragons and the Bolts tomorrow. Man, what a fun set that is going to be. The Oni Warriors, I mean, they had such a good week last week, and it's definitely an exciting step forward for them going into Phase 2. I think if you would have asked them if they would have been okay with the performance they had coming in, they, pro they probably should have said yes, honestly, with, with how rough Phase 1 has been for them. But obviously going to be disappointing to, to get that by and then have this type of performance here today. But Jade Dragon just came in really prepared, yep. and... Oni Warriors played a little more like we saw from them two weeks ago in comparison to last week. Well, this was always the, the threat of this matchup where the Oni Warriors on the, the absolute peak of their Season 8 so far, the Jade Dragons kind of bouncing back after not bad weeks, but, but rougher weeks by their own standards. Sure. You wonder then how the buy game maybe affects the Warriors. Do you think that comes into play at all? Not really, no. I Fair think enough. that, I mean, the Jade Dragons maybe, they, they certainly looked warm, but this is a team that's had a lot of buys throughout their time in the SPL. And, and you know, the, this core unit of Mike and Panda and, and Sam and Fine, they've they had buys like all last year, and they right. always came out looking pretty red hot. So I think it's just a matter of the Oni Warriors still clearly have some things to work out. Yep. The, what worked for them last week did not work for them this week and they can learn from that and get ready for phase two. Yeah, excited to see how the Oni Warriors bounce back from this in a few weeks. But before we get there, we got the Jade Dragons punching their tickets to the grand finals tomorrow up against the Olympus Bolts. That's it for this set. So Agro and I will take a break, and the desk will take us home.
Welcome back, everyone, to the SBL playoffs. Day number two here, all powered by Alienware. And as you can see by the library and everything we have behind us, well, guess who won their set? The Jade Dragons take that one in a pretty convincing 3-0 fashion. I mean, didn't seem to break a sweat, Taco. Didn't seem to miss a beat. There were maybe a couple of bumps in the road for them where, where things slowed down, but ultimately they still come out with the win. I don't think we saw the best of the Oni Warriors today, and I feel as though this team will probably admit to it very openly on socials that yeah. this was not the performance that they typically hold themselves accountable for, at least not the standard that they were trying to achieve. But for me, Gore, it really just all came down to the picks and bans. These games felt a little bit predetermined for the Warriors just because the Dragons just had every single upper hand in the drafting phase. Yeah, it didn't seem like they had much, again, a lot to worry about throughout this game. They had uh, so many quote-unquote signature picks. I mean, Pele for Sam has been absolutely insane, and yet it's not even his number one pick. Like, you're, you're out here banning the Mercury because it's so ridiculous to have to deal with. You get that, Panda Cat, you would kind of mention needing a better game on Heimdall than what the Dragons are used to. He got it here as they wanted it. It just seems like from top to bottom, they had pretty much the performance they would have wanted. Like It's one of those things I was trying to think of, of post-game interview questions. I've come up with two, and they're very standard. There's not much to crack in this one. <laughs> no, this is just a very controlling and dominating set for the Jade Dragons, and a lot of that is largely just credited to the fact that Sam for Soccer, Polar Bear Mike, they were by far the two standout candidates for me from this Jade Dragons roster here today. And don't get me wrong, it's not that Fino, Hurry, Win, and Panic Cat weren't doing anything. It's just they had such an easy time looking for the follow-up. Granted, there were a couple of really big pop-off moments for Fino. He had some really solid rotations as well. I just think that Sam and PBM were consistently forcing the Oni Warriors to be in such awkward positions, yeah. and it just created so many openings for the back line to just take over. And Panicat, all three games in a row, just kind of doing whatever the hell he wanted. And poor Kivo, I think all three games didn't really get to play realistically. I mean, there, there was not a lot of numbers going his way. His player damage wasn't there. The kills weren't there. And so maybe feeling that one a little bit too much as it hit home. Uh, just good from the Dragons, right? I mean, and after yesterday, look, the Titans push them to the brink. This is exactly what they would want. A 3-0 in the semis to push them to the finals. Again, there's a good chunk of change between this third, fourth set and what you get at minimum for being second, let alone what you can get for being first if you win the playoffs. And of course, I'm sure the Dragons are thinking a little bit about that as they get ready. In fact, we'll go ahead and figure that one out. We've got Panda Cat standing by. Panda Cat, I don't know if you heard me, but it was really difficult to come up with good questions for an interview here. You guys just kind of won, and you made it look easy. I mean, 3-0 didn't seem to break much of a sweat. What was it that went so right? I'd say today we had, like, very, very, very good drafts, and I think we were always one step ahead of the Warriors. On top of that, I still feel like people are caught in a meta that I started a couple weeks ago and are yet to adapt to what we've been doing to it. So I think it's just very, um, you know, very easy way to play the game, and people have let us do it for the past two days, and it just kind of gives us very easy wins. I was going to say, when you play it already and you play it at, at its best in the very initial, you kind of know what beats it best then and so you've been able to adapt really well y you win this one everyone else is, is left in the dirt the only people left for you to take on is going to end up being the bolts and the last time y'all faced they were able to take out that win but that's week four talk that's that's ages ago at this point how are you feeling going into the finals for tomorrow uh i'd say the team and i are very confident um Usually, whenever we lose about like two weeks of scrims coming up to a land, we always pop off at the land, and I can tell you um, that that was the case. I don't think we won literally any scrims leading up to these this tournament, and you know we just kind of always pop off at the tournament. So I, I, we're all confident. I think the Bolts are a great team. We're not, you know, making them a joke or anything. We're going to treat it very seriously. But I think uh, we should have the upper hand. I, I kind of always consider ourselves our uh, own worst enemy. So if we're both on our A game, I think we take the set. Well, hey, man, it sounds like you've got it figured out. You'll have a night to sleep over, some footage to watch over, I'm sure, to try and crack open what will be an interesting and exciting finals tomorrow. So congratulations once again. Good luck, and enjoy the night Thank while you. you still can. Thank you. The taco, I, I mean, they just kind of did it. Look, I'm, look, I'm going to tell you, they just did it. There's not much to go into here, but they are able to find that 3-0 win. Losing scrims, 
be damned. They are still able to come through and knock down everybody so far that has been in their way. And now we're going into what is a, an interesting weekend for a, or at least an interesting Sunday tomorrow with the Bolts taking on the Dragons. Uh, I mean, two teams. The Bolts a few weeks ago might have been something that you had to make a very hard, hot take stance to say they're a top team. But based on what we've been seeing, they deserve to be up there. Panicat kind of just hit the nail on the head there. He... I, I would largely agree that the J Dragons were the primary team to really create this new sort of competitive meta, and they have been some of the first alongside the Olympus Bolts, for what it's worth, to kind of crack things open yet again and begin going through yet another transformation period. And with these two teams matching up, I think that this is going to be a, a finals to look out for. Well, Championship Sunday tomorrow, 1 p.m. You can see it there on your screen. It's going to be the same time we've been starting the last few days, but you're not going to want to miss out on this. You know, some of these days, like today, maybe you come in a little bit late. Oh, you're halfway through the first set, but there's still a second set. Tomorrow, if you miss any of them, well, I'm sorry. They're just gone. You're going to have to wait. You're, maybe you guys scrub the VOD. There's always that option for you as well. But you want to be here and be when it's live. That's the important part. You can spam I was part. here when in, in chat, depending on who wins. There's a lot of fun that can come through for you. And again, it's going to be an exciting one at that. I personally can't wait. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, go sleep as long as I possibly can and try to get to tomorrow as soon as physically possible. We'll see you all then. Make sure you're ready. 1 p.m. Don't miss it. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.